Government Committee April meeting. Um, I'm Betty Kay, the chair. I'm joined by Jess Coleman and Michael Francoeur, the co-chairs. Also Lucian Reynolds, the district manager. Uh, and tonight we're going to be on a really tight schedule. Uh, we have unfortunately combined uh, eight different agenda items to hit, and we have a deadline of finishing in about an hour, a little over an hour and a quarter. So if everybody would keep their comments really brief and to the point, that's going to be essential to get through this. Many of them are time sensitive, so if we don't get to them today, they're not going to be done at all. So thank you. And Lucian, is the person here who can speak on the Lafayette bus stop? Yes, I've moved Patrick over to the um, panelist section. Patrick, you can unmute yourself. And then let me know if there's anybody else from your team you'd like me to pull over. There we go. Can you can you hear me now, Lucian? Yes. I can. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Betty Kay and Mr. Mitchell. Um, I'll be brief, recognizing your time. Uh, can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Uh, my name is Patrick Condren, Academy Bus. Uh, we've been operating uh, over this particular service for about 15 of the 30 some odd years that NYU has been in service, I, the, um, the shuttle bus system. This is an existing bus stop that uh, has been approved, not approved, but reviewed by DOT uh, and it currently used for tour bus stuff, whereas there's an NYU location just a little few doors down. And we're asking, in the development of the new intercity bus permit system and the identification of each individual stop and the permit systems in New York, curbside access is very important. Therefore, the permits are being issued by the city DOT for all buses in the city, whether it be shuttle bus, commuter buses, et cetera. And uh, we're in compliance with that by applying for this bus stop, in particular coordinating with them, and uh, to utilize that for the students and staff at that location in NYU as part of the shuttle bus system downtown. Um, uh, that's on Lafayette facing southbound at Walker. Uh, there is a bus stop sign. You can probably see it. It says big bus tours. Uh, it, it, that's if you want to see by that little white car that's parked to the right on what's on the screen now. It, exactly. There's a white car there and you can see this, the top end of it. There's a, an issue. It's not an MTA bus stop. It's right. a tour bus stop that we would be sharing with the tour bus company. So it'd be minimal impact and it's, uh, it, it's minimal activity. And it's only during school, you know, uh, sessions during the shuttle bus system for NYU. We're the contractor for NYU Academy bus. Yes, well, thank you very much. Is there anything else you want to add to that? Uh, I, I'm very sensitive to your time. You got me on first. I, I, I often talk about the whole system, <laughs> but I don't. No, you're a wonderful uh, person. This, That's this why bus, I put in. Stop your concern. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I put in the picture to show where the location. It's not right at the corner. It's in that white car is actually illegally parked because it is in a bus stop area. Sure. Sure. Uh, and if uh, Jess, you hear the next slide. So I want to say that there will be no parking spaces lost. And also to show from NYU, this route with the stop on Lafayette Street does already exist, as has already been mentioned. So there's no additional traffic either with this request. So are there any, I don't see any hands raised. Are there any questions? Eric, you? Yes. Um, I, what are the hours of operation dur during school session? All right. Um, I, I, I'm operating from my house. I don't have the whole schedule in front of me. Do we have Tony Luna on, on the line with me? Our, he's our manager of our system. Tony, are you on this call? He said he was going to join. Tony, me. I'm going to look to see. Um, Otherwise, I can tell you what was written in the application. Yeah. It's, okay. It's, so it's, I, I have um I have a hand up here on a call in. I'm going to unmute the call in. This may be the, your person here. You can unmute yourself, caller. I think star six. Go ahead. You're unmuted. You can speak. Oh, you muted yourself back again. Go ahead. Do you want me to get the times? 
I just I apologize. I'm op not operating the office, and I didn't have it with me. I didn't have to get. Is it in the materials, Patrick, that you sent us? It's in the yes. materials, right? It, it, the okay. schedules should be in front of. I'm going to so put sorry. the link to the schedule in the chat for everyone. It's a good question, and my apologies not having it handy. Betty, that bad thing is happening where we can't hear you. Daddy, we can't hear you. Let me move you with the panelists and then back to our presenter or attendee in the back. Uh, Lu Lucian, uh, Tony's on the call. He said he's trying to unmute. Um, it's a 201 number. Yeah, I sent a request. Tony, star six, I think that mutes. You muted yourself before, but we didn't hear you. It's, did you hear me now? Still can't hear you, buddy. Can you hear me? Hello? I can hear you. Who? Yeah, Tony, whoever we can just, hear you. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. This is uh, Tony Luna. I work with Pat, uh, Patrick Condren uh, with Academy Bus. I know you had a question about the schedules. Uh, so, uh, so that service that we run there for that particular stop, uh, it's where we run it uh, Monday to Friday uh, between the hours more or less uh, in the morning to about uh, late evening. Um, and then on the weekends, uh, uh, we start about 10, 10 in the morning uh, to late evening. Uh, you would say to about uh, uh, like 11:30 at night. Uh, um, it's 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 an average of, uh, if I recollect, about 30 to 35 trips more or less that we do, uh, that we circulate from that bus stop uh, that we bring the students to to NYU. If that answers the question. Yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. Another raised hand. Lucian, do you know if Betty is trying to get back on? Look, I'm sorry. I'm trying to manage windows here. Yeah. Tell me what you see. I see Betty. Hold on. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Great. Thanks. Okay. Are there any other questions? There's a call in user with their hand up. Oh, that's uh, Tony from from Patrick's team, Betty. That's fine. I, I, yeah, I already, I already, I'm sorry. I must have done it again. Apologize. No problem. So, are there any other questions before moving on? Because, like I said, time is our enemy tonight. Okay, then I guess time to move forward. Well, there needs to be a resolution. Yeah, uh, Jennifer from DOT, we need to have a resolution on this. I believe that's the case. I think if there's no there's no downside in voting for a resolution tonight. I was gonna say, why don't we just vote and then we're done? Since I heard no opposition, I, the uh, point I mean, I'll move a I'll move a, uh, an approval resolution of of this. A resolution yeah. to approve the request. Yes. Oh, Wait, and I can. I second. Oh, great. I second it. <laughs> and Lucian, do you want to take a vote? Sure. Any opposed? Any abstains? Abstentions? 
Anyone recusing? Hearing none. Uh, uh, Tammy, are you voting on this one? Do you need me to? We do not. Then I will not be. Thank you. <laughs> you got it. Okay. Sounds like it's approved. Great. Thank you all. Thank you. Nice to meet you. We're available for any questions anytime. Perfect. Thank, Thank you. you. And Lucy, I'm going to rely on these for this one too. The Omni Fairs. I, I don't know the speaker. Oh, is that Melissa Farley? Melissa Farley. Indeed. Yes, Melissa, Hi. if you would like to speak and if you have a presentation you want to share screen, just let just. Uh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I don't have any, I don't have a presentation. I just have a, actually a pretty quick update for Omni and then I can post some links to our um, Omni website that has a lot of videos about you know the different options that we have and are coming so i'm i'm happy to do that so if you guys are ready i can get started and thank you for having me i'm covering we've had some staff changes in the mta government relations office so i'm for the time being covering cb1 in manhattan so it's very nice to meet everybody and thank you for having me um so as you know in 2019 2020 we started rolling out Omni on the Omni system on our subway and buses. And um, to date, about 30,000, I'm um, sorry, 30% 30 of our MTA transit trips are made using Omni with bank cards or digital wallets. We've had some uh, exciting news in, in February. We started our pilot for fair capping, where if you use the same device or the same card for seven days, um, after the 12th ride, your rides are free until the Sunday, the clock restarts on, um, excuse me, the clock restarts on, on Monday night. So it's almost like having a pay, uh, an unlimited ride card for the seven days. If you use the same fair media to use the Omni card. So that's something that we've had since then. And for the past month, you might've seen the chairman announce that. For the first month, we had 168,000 people who benefited from the fair capping pilot program. So we're looking forward to moving ahead with that and see what happens um, in the coming months. Some of the other items that are coming up for um, Omni in May of this year, the reduced fare card customers will be able to enroll and access Omni um, to get the fare discount. And they'll be able to use their phone and their contactless cards and start to get the benefits of the, re the weekly fare capping too. And then later this year, the reduced fare Omni card, there'll be a reduced fare Omni card issued to the reduced fare customers who don't already use the digital options. Um, one other thing I'm sorry, I forgot to add was that, um, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that was right. Sorry, I was, I know my timeline's a little out of order here. Um, and then in the summer, our paratransit customers who currently don't have access to MetroCard to pay for accessoride trips, they will be able to use Omni cards to pay for their accessoride trips. They will, they'll just have one card. There'll still be a cash option at that point. And so as that information comes out, we will certainly get it out to all the community boards and elected officials. And in October, customers will start to see Omni vending machines in stations. And this way they can purchase, it's a way to purchase cards and reload cards at the station. Um, and the machines will sell full fare Omni cards and reduce fare and full fare will be able to be reloaded. So we're hope we are looking forward to that. There'll also be, a, at some point, there will also be a Omni version of the single ride ticket. Um, so that, that's an option that will be available. There's going to be a deployment of about 1,600 vending machines um, throughout the New York City transit system, and that's going to take about 13 months to complete. And then later on, we'll have um, be deploying Omni equipment to what are now our MetroCard vans and bus and the bus, so that people will be able to go to those locations and reload their card or buy an Omni card. And the other option that we also have is that we now have Omni cards at retailers. Um, we've been rolling that out. The major retailers that have Omni cards for purchase are 7-Eleven, Walgreens, CVS, 
um, mom and pop retailers that we've been dealing with for many years, um, and also places such as check cashing and independent drugstores. Um, and so the network is new. It's experiencing, um, you know, some hiccups as we as we roll it out. But we already have had um, 80, 80, I'm sorry, 880 locations that have supported a card purchase or reload transaction. So people, this is people who prefer to use cash or people who are relying on cash, they'll be able to go and purchase the card and not have to use the, a digital wallet or a, or a credit card to tap their Omni card. Um, and I think that is our timeline for now. If anybody has any questions and I will put a link in the chat to, um, as I said, the Omni website and some of the videos that explain the fair capping um, option. And there's a timeline there also of our rollout uh, for the things I just mentioned. Well, thank you for that update. And I'm going to call on Justine. I saw your hand up first and then followed by Tammy. Thanks so much, Betty. Um, and thank you so much for the presentation. I just have a question. Um, what, once Omni is in full swing, what's that gonna do to the uh, people in the in the booths? Like, what, are you getting rid of people? Oh, I don't, I don't know that. I will find out. I can certainly find out what the plan is for having people in the station. Yeah, my, my vote is for those people in the station. Okay. Thank you. My turn? I think so. I think Betty's on mute, but I think she's saying go okay. ahead. Uh, welcome to community board one. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I wanted to ask about the rollout in terms of for schools. We had spoken at some point when uh, the the group had come to present to community board one, there was uh, conversations about the rollout on how it would work for school communities because it's very different um, right. for schools. So I haven't heard any updates on that and I'm very uh, keen to hear updates. Okay, so on that, on that, what I am advised is that in the latter, part of this year and going into 2023 is when they're going to finish rolling out the functionality for those other types of special programs like um, the fair fairs and student passes to Omni. So I don't know right now, how, I know that we plan to do that and offer that for students, for student fairs in, in replace of the student metro cards, but I don't know yet how that's going to work, but I will, bring it back to that team and see if there's any additional updates that I could pass on now or when we have something that we can certainly come back to the community board and present on that or, or any of the other role, you know, as other items roll out, like for the reduced fare and that kind of thing, we can certainly. Um, so one of the other there. questions that, um, I, that I wanna thank you, yes, I'm very interested to hear that, is for the cash only customers, how are you managing Omni for cash only, um, both on the transit itself and in the stations? And I'll wait for my third question. Okay, so for the cash, that's that's the purpose of the Omni card, so that people with cash can go, right now they can go to a retailer and buy a card and, and put cash on it. They could also go back to that retailer and reload it. I can, I'll put the link in for that in the chat. Um, there's a list you can go by zip code to that to find a, a retailer that will do that. And then also that's when we start rolling out the vending machines will be the option of you'll be able to use cash at the vending machines and buy a card and reload a card using cash. So that's and, how we plan to, to handle that for Omni. And so what you did not mention in that dialogue was Omni in terms of being able to purchase it at a booth? Because the booth so is cash. I don't have anything on that yet. I can find out about what the booth function will be or how that will function moving forward. Right, yeah, we would love okay. to see the revised, I'm sure the pandemic put you guys way behind. We would love to see the revised timeline and the rollout plans. That's what um, <clears throat> last time they came to us, they shared with us. So thank you very much. Okay. No problem. Can you 
hear me now? Anyone? Very yes. low, Betty. Anyone? Yes, I can. Betty, I can hear you. You're in general usually a soft speaker, so. Okay, well, no, but this, okay. There's obviously an auditory problem. Uh, but Justine, is your hand newly up or back up or? Newly up, but I think I saw someone else's hand pop up, so I will wait. Eric's for a second there. Yeah, so Eric's for a second. If he wants to go first, I can wait. No. Okay. Okay. So I, I do have a newly new question then um, based on what Tammy was asking. Um, two things. One is when Omni's in force, when are you going to roll away the old Metro cards? Is that, is that? That will be when, when everything is transitioned over. Okay. So, so be that should that. be, yeah, it should be the end of 2023, the beginning of 24, but let me, let me confirm that. Okay. Okay. That's question one and question two are there um, what's. I don't know why I'm having this in my head, but Tammy talked about student passes and are there any class of students or you know, group of students from any place that are not able to use Metro cards or get Metro cards. For whether they're buses or something, whether it's buses or subways. Well, the. I mean, public school. Yeah, students. yeah, student, the student Metro cards are distributed through the DOE. Mm -hmm. to okay. The school. So transit does not make a decision as to who gets who it and who gets doesn't. it. The okay. school deals. Whatever. I, I mean, I don't know. And when does the it top of my head, right? And how when they do it that? It used to be distance and that kind of thing, but I don't know if that, I'll have to check how they do that now. It will be cool. And I guess then when does it turn off? So there's some kids that have to travel for sports programs. And if it's sometimes they're not done by seven o'clock and, and then they can't get home. So it should be the if students that have activities. There's usually a three ride on the metro card. There's a okay. three and, on and the, it doesn't the metro end. card, and it should there. I have to check the time. I thought it was eight o'clock. I don't um, know. Yeah, I don't I'm sorry. Know. You know what I? Yeah, I, no, it was something that stuck school, in my head. With COVID and school being out, I haven't had a lot of questions yeah. on student Fair metro enough. card, but I can check that for you. There, be I cool. believe Thank that you. there was a time. It, it's between seven and eight that that they yeah. that's not it, supposed to be used, and I believe that there's three rides that they get. I think you're correct with the three rides. I think that um, so get to school. It's, I think it's school to the to the to the event the and then to the home. event and then home. That makes sense. Okay, thank you. Okay. No problem. Right, Dan Mitchell, and then Mitch. Um, yeah, I just, I just uh, wanted to say that right now, um, all the the clerks at the booths, they don't do any transactions. They don't do any sort of Metro card transactions at present. Correct. So, right. Yeah, I don't know when, I don't know what the timeline is for that. So that's kind of like a. No, no, I'm, I'm issue, saying aside yeah. from Omni, yeah, they don't even, yeah. they don't do any Metro card transaction whatsoever. No, like there's, for, yeah, yeah. there's certain booths that that do do transfers, but as right now, still, they're not taking, doing any okay. cash transactions or other transactions. Right. Or any. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I can, I will, I haven't heard anything about that, but I will mention that it was brought up at this meeting and see if I can get um, a better response than I have. Yeah. I mean, I, I um, when I needed a transfer of, of a, card that was expiring, I was told that that's something now that the machines handle the kiosks and and they did. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Great. And then if you're done, then let's have Mitch. Hi, I just want to follow up before I ask my question on one of the deadest points and she's exactly right. Uh, they're not doing anything and every booth that I've asked about a transfer. And, and and I have a senior card. They've said they're not allowed to do it. They wish they could work, but they're not allowed to. So I, I have no idea, like, uh, other than the, uh, the, the, the station on Stone, not the station, but the office on Stone Street and one or two other places, I've been told that they can't, that their hands are tied. So num number number two, going back many years when my daughter was, my daughters were playing into, into uh, high school athletics and, and the, the three rides are not enough in certain cases. Uh, there are too many things like like going sometimes they'll go to, to one place to a practice 
and then they'll have a, then a game or, or something else. And there are some kids that play on multiple teams. And I could tell you that myself, along with a few other parents and the coaches, had to kind of beg some of the station agents to let the, 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 the teams on because some of the students didn't have the fares because they, they used up the three rides. So in many cases, the three rides are sufficient, but in all cases, they're not. And uh, some, that needs to be taken into consideration. Okay. Okay, okay so you. any response or just okay? No, I'm going to, I okay. will. I'll I'm have sorry, to thank you. Back. Yeah, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't, you know, that's a, um, a fair issue. So I'd have to bring that back. Here and, okay. You know, let Thank you know very much. We also, we also have a standing resolution on that, Mitch, okay. because uh, yes. high school students had come to us with that request. Right, and 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 even, like I said, uh, usually those type of things start in middle school as far as traveling to other schools, you know, for for after school programs, you know. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Thank and you I'll get much. back to the, I'll get back to Lucian with what a. Uh, Whatever I can get for uh, on that issue. Thank you. Yes, well, in the absence of other hands, Melissa, I do want to thank you and I really look forward to getting your links and, and various information that you can. Uh. Thank you. Thank you for having me and I'll get back to Lucian with, um, with the responses that I can get for these issues that you brought up. Have a good night. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Thank you. Betty, I think we lost your sound again. <laughs> Betty, we should, for these types of situations, we should try getting, you know, uh, change your Mike over to yes. your phone. Wait, we can't hear you, Betty. Nope, nothing. Yeah, it's probably not helpful for me to offer suggestions while it's happening, but I do wonder if I know that um, WebEx has some. Uh, like setting to reduce background noise. And in the past, sometimes I've had that accidentally pick up my audio or have issues with that algorithm. So maybe in the future, kind of, we could do a quick session to check the settings that you have on your WebEx buddy. That's an interesting it, idea. It could be, I, I don't have any background noise, so I, yeah. You're back. You're back. We hear you again. I was gonna say it's it's in and out because I was talking. You no, know, I don't know what it is. So I well, we heard that. you now. Yeah, no, it's, that's why I don't know why it's in and out. I think Michael's just good luck. But anyway, because time is such an issue, uh, for the next topic is about a resolution for full funding of the Master Streets Plan, uh, and I know this has come up with multiple items with the budgeting this year, such as with the Parks Department. Uh, where there was concern that the budget. We lost you. Still gone. Try again. Lean into your mic, maybe. Can't hear. Betty, you're not like using headphones or ear pods or anything. It's just straight. Yeah, can't hear you. I'm so sorry. But can we have uh, uh, Jess pick up from here and, and 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 move it while we work on your audio? Okay, Jess, we're gonna have you pick up here. Um, I'm gonna work with Betty on resolving this audio, but um, can you speak or manage this issue? 
Yeah, this wasn't this wasn't you know one of my issues, so I can't really speak to it much. But um, we have the resolution here. If anyone wants to bring anything up about it. Yeah, so the 2019 bill, just if I can just speak to the, yeah, some of the background you, on this. <laughs> sure. The 2019 bill uh, required the city to come up with a master plan uh, that would kind of essentially lay out all the major street changes, including bike lanes, parking, um, uh, everything that would kind of happen and uh, create a five year master plan. So people would know what was baked in. Um, then everyone would have a chance to review it. And then they would implement instead of kind of piecemeal approach to changing the way the streets are laid out. So, um, uh, there was what happens, uh, or what is we've seen recently is that uh, the city will legislature will pass a law that the mayor signs saying, you know, the agency must do this or that. Um, and then when it comes time to working out the budget, you know, the implementation of that thing. Um, is not given any money. So even though it's on the books and it's a requirement, if it can't be uh, funded, then it can't be implemented. So we saw the same thing happen with the um, the law that established a placard enforcement team for DOT. That's a law that's on the books, it exists, but it has no funding. So there's no one who's been hired to do so, to do that, that work. So this is uh, something that um, is, that, um, the Betty and uh, other members have identified as being an important issue that needs to have funding in order to see it carried out because it was such so much work and uh, effort to organize around it. That's the gist of this. So it's nothing new that's being put in place. It's basically saying let's fund it. Yeah. The Can law you hear was me passed. Now? Oh yes, Betty. Okay, I I followed uh, Michael's advice. Loud too. Thank you, Michael. I don't think me yet. I don't think I hear Betty anymore. Nope. She was there perfect and loud and then it died. Oh, that's just it. Yeah, that's what keeps happening. We keep hearing you nice and loud at first and then it dies. Yeah, for no reason. I mean, I but we can happening. still hear you now. Just it's just quiet. I just want to point out to people what is in the streets plan. This is just in the DOT website. And as you can see, oh, we keep losing you, Betty. Eddie, can you dial in through your cell phone for audio? It would be much faster. It's not, if I'm lip reading, it looks like you say you don't know how to do that, but we could just get, send you a phone number. It's on the website. I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, because Betty does not have to hang up from where she is now, she just puts hey guys, herself on this mute. This is my window. See this button right here by the mute button? Yeah. Click that. Can you guys see this menu that yep. comes up? All right. You're going to switch audio. Click switch audio. And then you can call in. This you let you use your phone as an audio. So this is just in case it's a microphone issue on your computer. You can switch to the and, phone. And Betty's still here as, and she still has video and she still has everything else. She can see us and then she can still talk. Yeah, yep, it's all the same. Okay, so, um, what we may need to do is. Betty, we can't get your audio on, then we'll see if there's any questions um, and then maybe move towards seeing if there's interest for a vote here. 
Any questions from anyone? I think I just want to. I have a question. I just want to make sure that when we do this resolution, it is really just for. Um, it has no, it has nothing but quantitative requests for funding. It doesn't say we want to see X expanded, Y expanded. We want all of the things that are in here, you know, where it says qualitative benchmarks and things like that. Why don't you go to the next slide? Oh, she's back. Hi, Betty. Hi. Uh, yeah, this is just Mayor Adams' comments. Uh, next. So some suggested, therefore, be it resolved that people can discuss around. And I think this kind of answers your question, Tammy. It would be to ask the mayor and city council to fully fund the street plan for this year and future years, uh, to urge the DOT to implement their street plan to meet the benchmarks or exceed them, and to implore the mayor Adams to keep his pledge to reduce New York City's municipal fleet by 50 to 70 percent. Are there any hands, comments? Oh, sorry, I see them. Uh, Mimi and then Detta. Define municipal fleet. Are the city owned vehicles, so they would be for the various departments and agencies. Are those for enforcement? Well, they could be anything, but they're for all the city agencies. Oh, okay. Things we complain about all the time. The Department of Buildings, the Department of, you know. Yeah, like placard park. Yeah, I just want to make sure they'd still be able to transport these, themselves about the city and enforce. These are the city-owned vehicles, and I'm going to guess that the mayor would keep that in mind. Sure. And this was his comment, was that his intent was to reduce. So it's just asking him to follow through with something that he stated publicly. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it sounds like arbitrary numbers, honestly, but, you know. Oh, but they're his numbers. Yeah, I know. I think they're arbitrary. So, yes, uh, Detta? Did you want to say anything? Just give me a moment. I'm on two devices. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm all for that. I mean, as an example, Department of Buildings has a fleet of 400. You know, and HPD has a fleet for their inspectors. But um, I wouldn't mind this, though, being just a really clean resolution only about funding for the streets plan and implementation of the streets plan and leaving out that third be it resolved. I just I feel like that's somewhat of a separate issue to say, although I understand you can say, well, you're saving money here so you can put it into the streets plan. But uh, I would be just comfortable with a resolution just saying, please, like, fund this streets plan and implement it. And that's a good point, and we'll we'll get some feedback. Uh, since Eric had his hand up, I'll call on Eric first, and then I'd like feedback with people who agree with data that that should be cut out or not. But Eric, yeah. So the streets plan. I, I mean, I agree. I agree that that we need to have a master plan on on on, on streets, not do it piecemeal. But I also want a transportation plan. I want transportation to be equal. To safety, I, look, safety is important to me. I, I cross the streets, but streets are used for transportation, and I, I, I want to make sure that that's not forgotten. That it serves serves a basic purpose, because sometimes to make something safe, it it it, it reduces the flow, and and whether it be bike lanes or, or or barriers where trucks or vehicles, bikes can't pass. So I, I just want them to keep in mind that safety should be equal to the role that the streets. Uh, you know, to be used for transportation that are still be, to be used for transportation. Okay. How about as a whereas comment?
Can you still hear me? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Then, yeah, certainly a whereas statement could be added to that one to, to bring up that point. Anyone else want to respond to Mimi, uh, to Dennis' comment about getting rid of this third or comments about altering the others? Therefore, be it resolved. I agree with it. Delete it. I, I agree with getting rid of it too and just focusing on the funding. Okay, does anyone want to, well, do you want to move forward with voting with the assumption that I can't delete the third one unless Jess wants to do that? I can, I can do that. Thank you. Okay, so this, this would be what you're voting on. Can I? Uh, can I just say one other thing? Uh, sure, but keep time in mind. Yeah, no, I'm just, um, I think it's not a problem to add in a whereas related to what Eric said, but um, like I did read through the whole, <laughs> the whole streets plan. It is all about transportation. You know, it's, it, it is, it's, it's about moving people. It's not, it's not just about like putting aside moving people for safety, so. but I'm comfortable with a, with adding language about that. Thank you. Yeah, a balance between maybe put that as part of the whereas a balance between moving people and safety or something. But yeah, and then if that's the case, can we call a question? Yes. No. We seconded it already, so we can certainly, if Lucian wants to take a vote. All right. Any nays? Any abstentions? Any recusals? All right, we'll take those unanimous. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. I want to go on to the next item. This is from last month. So just to kind of go back to last month's thinking. Uh, this is so we had lots of discussion that this could be based on. If you go to the next one, I think it puts together where the consensus was for the therefore be it resolved, but didn't have time to wordsmith at all. But anyway, one that the Manhattan Community Board one calls on our council member to introduce and or support a bill that authorizes citizen reporting of hazardous obstruction violations. And I've listed for you here in parentheses, in quotes, I'm sorry, in brackets, with uh, exactly what a hazardous obstruction is. Things like blocking sidewalks, crosswalks, bus lanes, and fire hydrants is what this was. Uh, to add pedestrian ramps as a hazardous obstruction violation that citizens can report. Uh, to urge the mayor to support and sign such a bill. And that parking violations by city vehicles and vehicles with city issued placards is a form of corruption uh, that needs to be greatly curtailed and subject to citizen reporting, which it was in the previous legislation. Yeah, so this is more or less asking them to bring back what had been discussed and sort of dropped previously. And Mitch? Yes, can I uh, just refresh my memory, Betty? Uh, did we decide, like I was in favor of separating the uh, placards, which I agree wholeheartedly on everything you've just said, with citizen versus citizen for a larger larger reasons, even if many times they're, they're justified. Did we kind of agree to that, or did we not agree to separate them? I don't think we can separate them. Why? Because to have a law to only deal with placards and another law to only deal with other but vehicles. But I think I, I know I'm not speaking for you know most of the the committee, but I know that there were some other people that agreed that you know it's like uh, the the police, the uh, certain you know people judges have to be held to a higher standard, and and so that was uh, uh, you know the other thing is like I mean just like I think the, the other day I'm you know on, on Broadway there's uh, uh, the the post office truck is, is 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 picking up the mail from the mailbox and has to you know park in the bus lane. So all the other cars have to go around in the other lane they're not supposed to, uh, you know, and, and or, or some ladies dropping off uh, 
people with packages. Uh, I had to take my wife home from surgery, <sighs> a knee surgery the other day, and, and I had to for, make sure that the taxi parked right in front of the building that we were going, whether there, there was a bike lane or not. I mean, there wasn't, but I'm saying things happen. So somebody could just take a photo of a moment in time, and that doesn't mean that the car was there for like, like 15, 20 minutes. So just as a pedestrian, I, I, I like I personally think I agree with 90% of the language that you're doing, uh, especially what you meant about the placards and the violations and everything. But I, my opinion is to try to separate those from citizen versus citizen. And I think I forget if it was Jess or somebody else saying, well, you know, you can you can report to the police on other crimes. And that's true. There's a, there's a private number that you can call up if you know somebody raped somebody or killed somebody or stabbed somebody. That's that's we're, that's comparing like two totally different things than uh you know uh somebody so anyway you, you you get the gist of what i'm saying so i don't know how other people feel but i i thought that there was more people in agreement to at least separate them and uh because i feel there was a hundred percent agreement on 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 every, on the placard and uh you know reporting that yeah mitch i just, i if i could just chime in here sure. who, who, i can't see who is who is this it's Jess. Uh, Thank you, Jess. Yeah, I think the the, the thinking was because there was a lot of disagreement over like the, the details of, of what a, 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 an ideal plan would look like, and I think right. one of the compromises we came to was just you know since this is already a bill that was already written and is is sitting at the city council that we would just say that they should pick up that bill again and reconsider it, and that we didn't have to all come to agreement because it didn't seem possible on exactly the details of that. So I think you know this sort of Okay. was the line of, of saying just reconsider what you already you know had well then could we could we say that but saying that to, we we want to put an emphasis on 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 you know that the the, the part that we all agree with and maybe with, with some reservations about citizen versus citizen uh uh there you know, is a whereas it, statement there is a whereas about that, that. Yeah. that there was not a complete consent that there was a consensus okay okay obviously if it passes but there was not complete agreement right because like like you know like i see the thing is the, the way you worded i'm not sure if it was you worded it or other or you know lucian or, or jess also did it with you you know with a obstruction of course if the, the, the there's a you know a a, 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 a disabled i'm sorry if i'm not using the right language but a ramp for you know a disa a disabled uh, uh, people or or uh, you know there's you know a, a car blocking a bus lane or a bike lane for you know for, for whatever you know for a while but you know for situations where we're all sharing the same space I, I you know we've all been in situations where we've just had to drop somebody off or pick somebody up or something and you know we just you know it was it was dangerous to to get out the other side of the car and and so I would just hate for somebody to be caught, caught in some bureaucracy, you know, where that that's not the spirit of what we're trying to do. Okay, Mitch, yeah, vote the way you want. And keep in mind, some people are inconvenienced. This is simply the law, and this is using the terminology in the law that we're interested in having them reconsider. Does anybody else so in the committee would like to? to we, have, we have some other is, hands. Does so. anybody else would let's, like let's to? Let's hear okay. from some other people, Mitch. Thanks. Uh, okay. Tammy and then Eric, you and Dedda all. Tammy. Thanks. Sorry. Um, I'd like to see the bill number put in the therefore be it resolved. So there's a reference, complete reference to it. Um, and then to address in the whereas, which I have not seen, and I apologize that the goal is is not to pit citizen against citizen for the average driver, but again to solve the problem that we have of the police not curtailing themselves and city agencies not curtailing themselves. Uh, what if we make it? Support that to reconsider, and then I can put in the exact number, which is 195. I mean, it's it's referred to in the whereas clauses like one, two, like five times the, the specific yeah. bill number. But Dedo, a lot of times, all that matters is what we've said at the end. The tops okay. ends up being history, so it would be it's just a reinforcement point. Yeah, six times, but yep, that's fine. 
It could take from one up top to move down below, that's for sure. Right, so anyway, what it would be then is the Manhattan Community Board, board one to reconsider, uh, and it is in, for introduction of 2159-2020. What about Tommy's other point about putting in a citizen, not citizen versus citizen? That's mentioned in the therefore in the. Did I miss that somewhere? That I I, I'm sorry if I can't see it because I'm on my phone. So help me, help me out. I, it may be in the in the whereas is, but I don't see it here in the therefore be it resolved. Correct. So citizen against citizen is merely anyone who reports. It's going to be somebody against somebody breaking the law. So if you want to view it as citizen against citizen, the person breaking the law is harming the other person. It's, you know, take. Oh, no, that's not what side you're on. Said. No, you, oh, hold on, Mitch, Mitch, let me finish my thought. It, I'm sorry, okay. You, that's okay. I appreciate the passion. Um, would you mind putting up the, the whereas is so we can see them? I didn't see it in the materials for the meeting, which I actually clicked in and looked at the folder and looked at all the files. So if you can show the therefore be beyond the therefore be it resolves to what data was referring to, then I would clearly understand. Okay, let, let me uh, take a second and I'll pull it up. I can read that one. It says CB1 members were, are divided on issuing reporting incentives from the collected fines with some members concerned about setting a precedent for citizen against citizen enforcement with others flexible on the level of the incentive, but supportive generally of the idea of a monetary incentive, which would likely increase enforcement of parking violations. Yes, and it's on the second page. It's about the third yes. or fourth. It's the one second down. to last one. Yeah. Can you make it slightly larger? Does that work? <laughs> That perfectly expresses what I was talking about. So thank you very much. Okay, if you put your hands down, if you're not, if you didn't raise it again, uh, otherwise I. Because I'm we're guilty of that as well. Uh, <laughs> we have dead dead Eric and Justine. Yeah, I just wanted to. Oh, am I? I can I just want to echo what Jess said. It's like I view this as we are just asking the legislators to take this law up again and they can hammer out the details. Like so even if we did hammer out the details, it does no good because we're not the lawmakers. So I view this more as just a request to our legislators to say, hey, you know, think about this again. Thank you and Eric. Yeah, uh, I, I feel very uncomfortable with citizens reporting on other citizens. I, I, what type of world would it, it just leads to to more mistrust between people like you, you'll, you'll always like it's just not. That's why we have um, the police. Maybe we need another agency to, to do this if they're not doing it. Eric, uh, do you but, know that it already exists? Um, which agent, which, which agency then? It, it, the citizen reporting exists for idling vehicles. Idling yes, vehicles. yes. There was an article in the New York Times last week, and it it it, it highlighted people that are doing it, you know, for profit, and and you know, that I don't even agree with that. I mean, it the failure of city government to do their job should not lead to citizens reporting on each other, especially when there's a profit motive that, that distorts things. They're going to go for nuisance claims just to make money. I mean, the the main character, the main 
person. I think he said he netted $64,000 last year. And he goes, you know, with his camera secretly. I, what type of society is that? Um, yeah, I, maybe placard abuse, but I don't want citizens to do it, especially for citizens, citizens on citizens for profit. That, that's just makes, will turn into yeah, the other extreme of where, where, you know, everyone is watching each other and you don't know who's going to report you to the government. It's just, it's not a comfortable way to live. <laughs> you don't go on Twitter and see how many people report all the time. Okay. <laughs> that doesn't make it right. <laughs> it doesn't, well, it doesn't make what the people doing illegally right either. No, I agree with 90% of what you're saying, Betty. M Mitch, let's not, Wait, let's keep some order. Turn to speak. Okay, sorry, sorry. No, that's okay, that's okay. And um, I guess I'm gonna echo what Eric and Mitch said, um, because, and thank you, Mitch, for reminding me that this was the issue that we had. And maybe the way to solve it, maybe, is to do what Tammy said with in repetition of the bill number. Maybe we can do a repetition of the whereas that, um, I guess, smaller, simpler, but just say that, you know, Manhattan Community Board 1, review, bill number, whatever, um, and then say, and, you know, with taking into consideration the fact that there was concern raised about citizen against citizen, I mean, whatever the wording is, but citizen against citizen reporting, while there was 100% support, if that's a true statement, for placard abuse um, reporting, or something like that, where, where it's bringing it as bringing it down into the therefore be it resolved, because as Tammy said, a lot of times electeds just read the therefore be it, therefore be it resolved section and without mentioning the concerns. Because I would vote yes for it if we had some reference to it. Because I do agree that like 90% of the point is what you're saying. These people are committing crimes, but I also could see this as being a vehicle whereby people are getting out their grudges against people. And that would be bad. Thank you. Thank you, and I guess that addresses everyone's question. So I guess it gets down to people voting. I mean, what uh, they choose I'm, to do. I'm happy to move the motion just in the interest of time, so that we please do. Since we've, um, you know, we've worked, you know, just and people can just vote it up or down because we did that, this that already is, last last this month question, and Dana? this month. I'm sorry, Dana. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Betty, can you answer? Um, can you just answer the Justine's suggestion before we get ready to vote? I think she did by not moving it or saying. I mean, I think that she doesn't want to move it into the bottom part, which is what I'm assuming the answer is. So there's no change. Is, is, like that. is that true, Betty? That you're refusing to at least consider Justine's? Uh, Refuse. <laughs> I, I don't mean. I know you know I love you, Betty, but I, I, I'm. Do you, are, are you not considering Justine's uh, 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 suggestion? I am saying let's vote for it the way it is. Okay, so that's all right. Because so, adding more words to say that some people are concerned when it already says that in the whereas is really redundant. That was the, okay. I, uh, you, I think you're going to force you're forcing a few people to to say no when ninety percent of, of of the bill is is great. It's too so, bad. um. Okay. So do I say that I'm moving the motion? All the question is is what you call do. Question All the question it. is actually making a motion to end debate, but I know that's sort of the lingo we use, but that's Second actually it. but in the name of time it's seconded. <laughs> okay. Let's take a vote. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and just run this through. Uh Kay? Uh yes. Frank Orr? Yep. Holman? Yes. Flynn? No. Roman? No. Joyce, Canal, you? No. All? All, yes. Okay. Uh, is there anybody else here that needs to vote that would like to vote? I would like Can to vote. vote. Can I vote? Hey, Tammy, yes. Tammy? Yes. Okay. Did Justine vote? No, she's not a committee member. She's oh, not yeah. a full board. I can't I'm vote. sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. 
All right, cool. Um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, two, three. Uh, motion carried. Great, well, we'll take it on at the end of the month at full board then. Uh, so let's go on to the next slide. Okay, now we're gonna move on to street activity permit requests. And there are four of them. I remind you the street activity permit office has just resumed issuing permits after a two year pause due to COVID. So for some of you who have kind of forgotten how to do it, or in fact have never done it, you're gonna to get to see four of them now. And all of these are uh, repeat annual events. So there are no new requests that have not been in our community district before. So you're going to Betty, take I did, a look. I did ask Lucian to bring for the committee all of the, because all of these um, have prior resolutions. Yes. We could uh, share that with the committee. Come on. I'll put some links in the chat. Um, I did send them to Betty just before the uh, the meeting. But um, once we move everyone over, I'll put the links in the chat. For two I found, I found um, resolution for uh, Bike New York and for the American Heart Association run. Um, had a little trouble finding something about the 9-11 Memorial 5K. Is it gonna be linked again to that Google Drive? I can put a link to the Google Drive in. No, no, I prefer a link that's not. I'm having trouble with that drive. Okay, um, but the, the I'll put links in from our website for the okay. resolutions. But you'll have to scrub through for it because they're all in the pack for that month. Be Betty, can I ask you one question about this? We haven't started yet. Okay, all right. I'm I'm just confused about one of the races. If I'm I'm thinking of the correct race, that's why. I, uh, well, let's hear if people as they're presented. Uh, in fact, okay. question, is someone here to present the Washington Market Schools yes, Street? Rebecca, uh, Rebecca Miguro is here. Then Rebecca, welcome and. Oh, hello. Hello. Um, glad you can hear me. Um, thank you so much for fitting us into the schedule on the agenda today. Um, I haven't done one of these before, so um, I can just go over really briefly what the event is about and a little bit about our school. Um, and then if there's any questions, I can, I'm happy to answer those. Um, does that work? Yes, please. Okay, great. Um, so Washington Market School has been um, in the neighborhood since 1976. Um, we've done this street fair almost every single year, except for 2020 and 2021 for obvious reasons. Um, and this is our first year back. Um, we're hoping to hold it on May 7th on Dwayne Street between Greenwich and Hudson. Um, and the event is really a community event. Um, we have restaurants and cafes from the neighborhood. We have entertainers, um, lots of activities from the kids. Um, and we have neighborhood sponsors um, and vendors at the event, um, parents and just community members. Um, and we're really excited to, to do this again um, and welcome the community to learn more about our school and to just have a fun Saturday together. Great, and yeah, this for those who want to see the actual numbers or, you know, from their application itself for the time, the location. Uh, should be closed. And I want to also point out if you go to the next slide. Because that was May 7th, mm -hmm. the friends of Dwayne Park are also doing an event. On September, May 7th, yes, if you'd like to address the fact how you've been working with them. Yes, yeah, so we were able to speak with Robin, who's a treasurer of the Friends of Dwayne Park last week um, about our plans. He let us know about the event and we've changed our street map a little bit to make sure that we're not um, interfering with the event in any way. And in fact, that we're collaborating together. Um, so we moved. I'm not sure if you guys are able to access our layout our proposed layout for the event, um, but we moved kind of the noisier things to the other end of the street. Um, and we've also said that our, in terms of our setup, we're going to make sure that um, we set up in from nine to 10 um, closer Dwayne Park and then do um, the other half while they actually have their event going on um, so that we're not making noise or doing any setup or having people going back and forth while their event is ongoing. Uh, we also um, moved our main entrance around. We were originally gonna have it at Greenwich and we moved it to Hudson um, 
just so there wasn't going to be any confusion as people were coming into Dwayne Park for the event. Um, if they had any questions, they could, you know, come to us or come to them and wouldn't be confused about what's going on. Um, as far as I know, we did hear from him yesterday um, that there weren't any objections to our event or to the proposed layout. Great, thank you. Are, are there any questions? I think this is a very liked proposal with really no, <laughs> no issues. Great. <laughs> I'm going to say, so if there are no questions to be had, it sounds like a very fun event, and we did get a, a map that show of where the event is so i'm glad to see you working so closely with the friends of of duane park and best of luck after two years of missing your fundraiser yeah we're really really excited to just get everyone together again after two years well then let's move forward with a resolution of support since i'm not hearing any negatives all the question second second Okay, all those opposed? All those abstaining? All those recusing themselves? Okay, sounds like it's unanimous vote in favor. Thank you so it's much. A popular group in the neighborhood. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's move on to the five borough bike tour. And Lucian, I'm going to leave it to you for who is representing Bike New York. Sure. So we have Devin from Bike New York who's here. Talk about the Five Road Bike Tour. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having us. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Great. Thank and would you, you like to share screen? Um, I actually don't know. Let me see if I can do this. Lucian, I, I don't know if it's easier. I, I sent it. Um, in the chat some slides for this. I can uh, give you the privileges to share your screen. Okay, let me see if I can do that. Sometimes I have some, yeah, I have some sort of security like firewall that always pops up on WebEx for me, unfortunately. Okay, you send me slides? I just put them in the chat. There's a Google link um, and then let me know if you can access that. Okay, I'm going to actually just turn that around and send it to um, Jess, if that's okay, Jess. Yep, that's fine. I'm trying to look for it. It's not, I won't be able to see it in the chat, right? It's in the chat. The link is in the chat. Good for it. Oh, I think I could maybe send it just to you. No, you can't. I got him. Thank you. I think I got it. Is that it? That's it. Thank you. All right. Um, thanks for having um, thanks for having me, everyone. Thanks for um, listening to um, a little bit about the five hour bike tour tonight. Um, we also are happy to be back at our normal date uh, the first weekend in May. Um, last year we were postponed due to COVID, and we had the event in late August, um, and then we were postponed a weekend because of Hurricane Henri. So. Happy to be back at our normal date this year um, in May and wanted to speak to you a little bit about our start line location, um, which is for the most part, um, things remaining very similar as they were last year into 2019. Um, so our traditional start line proper is on Church Street and Franklin Street um, with our formation area and our rider corrals, basically um, starting at Franklin and Church and extending all the way down Church to the Battery. Um, one change that was um, we were given approval for this year from the NYPD was building an extra hour into the start timeline um, 
and really into the event overall to help um, bottlenecking and congestion along the route. So um, we've traditionally had four waves and the start timeline has been about two and a half hours. Um, so we now have six waves um, and the start timeline is three and a half hours. So in the past, you may remember we were um, all through and finished at, with riders exiting the start line at around 10 a.m. So now it'll be around 11 a.m. Um, but that's probably the biggest change you'll see on our end here this year. Um, we still have the same amount of riders. So we're just splitting people up into smaller groups um, into six waves instead of four. Um, this slide just illustrates it's the same formation area. So taking up the same amount of street space, just as I mentioned, smaller waves um, and very similar access points from the east and west as we've had in the past. Um, this, this map here is sort of our main area of usage, which is really right at the intersection of Church and Franklin. So um, what we have on Church between Canal and Franklin is uh, a VIP breakfast area that has will remain the same as it has been in the past. Um, we have some spots for bike parking, some breakfast um, and coffee tents, um, seating for people, tables and chairs, some bathrooms um, with our stage, our mobile stage being a little bit further south at the intersection of Church and Franklin um, with our, our start arch also there. Um, I know amplified sound has been an area of concern for this group in the past. So we, our speakers from the stage um, only extend until Leonard Street. They don't go past that, just one block south of the start line. Um, and in 2019, I believe, which was part of the resolution was that we would include speakers on both sides of the street so the volume can be lower overall and we wouldn't go um, above 80. The decibels would stay below 80, which we did in 2021 and to which we intend to have the same plan for this year um, to keep it the same as it has been in the past. In addition to that, that is the only place where we do have amplified sound. Um, I know in the past, I think a bunch of years back, we might have had some other areas of entertainment down at the battery or along the start formation, but this is the only spot where that happens. Um, and it is the same AV vendor that we've used in the um, in, in 2021 um, and in 2019. So they know the area very well um, and have responded really well to all the concerns that we've put into place. Um, a little a little bit about this is a top line um, schedule for when we'll be in the area loading in and then on um, this is really just our load in schedule for Saturday, April 30th, which extends into the early morning hours of um, Sunday, May 1st. So this is also very similar to what we've had in the past. Um, we will be hanging some additional um, directional signage just for the new waves and um, to help keep things less chaotic in the morning um, around the area. We'll do that Saturday during the day. We'll really just be organizing some equipment on Saturday during the day in the area. And then we really start to see street closures and the NYPD towing uh, begin at midnight with the setup really being between you know, 12 a.m. and 4 a.m. Um, this is our schedule for um, flyering in the area and doing some community outreach. So you could see we've started to do some in-person and email outreach to businesses right around that Church and Franklin area. Um, we'll start posting event notification signs, distributing more flyers, um, and then the week of April 25th, um, right through the week of the event, hanging and rehanging those no parking signs. So um, the community is aware of what's happening the weekend of May 1st. Um, this is the hotline number that we provided in 2021 and, and this year to that the community can call and we'll put it on all the flyers as well in case there's any concerns or um, you know anything we need to work through while we're loading in or during the event. Um, that number is live all the time. I think that's most of what we wanted to cover um, from our end tonight. Happy to answer any questions or talk through anything. Thank you very much. And thank you for specifically pointedly addressing those things that were requests from last time. And I'm going to start out with Tammy Meltzer, our CB1 chair. So first and foremost, I'd love to know why we didn't stick with August versus May. And I say this only because year after year after year, um, you know, it's a very popular time in the neighborhood and it's 
it's a, an incredible event. We are not necessarily thrilled with the early morning hours. Uh, there will be a ton of people who have moved into the neighborhood in the last two years who will not think that this is any type of you know necessary improvement. And there are concerns about you know as large of an impact as it is, you know, versus many of the other neighborhoods that you're not on the primary street that goes, mm -hmm. it really does shut down the entire thing, the entire community. So August for us, while maybe not for you, is a much better time frame because less people are in the city. You know, mm -hmm. there are less the, the leagues aren't, you know, in full swing with their with baseball and soccer and everything else. And so it's less conflict, I would have thought. I don't know if it affected your um, the number of riders, if your sponsorships, the money you brought in. I'd be I'd be very curious to hear all of those things. And I would also be curious to know what else on the resolution that we asked you for, and maybe that's a question for Betty or for Lucian, what outstanding issues have not been addressed? Sure. Sure. So um, to start with your first question, um, moving to a, a date later in the year would be preferable for us also. Um, we've talked to the mayor's office and the police department about potentially moving the event to June or at some other point in the summer. Um, we we also would like that just because we would like some some warmer weather, um, which would be great. I and mean, last year we had to postpone because of the hurricane, but you know, that was a it, it was one of being actually a very nice moderate day. Um, so that is something we've talked to the city about. I think a lot of what we've heard back is it's it's very difficult to the event has been grandfathered into this weekend and it's very difficult to move such a large event, um, you know, with lots of competing events happening. But I think it is something we would continue to look to talk to them about in the future and see if there is anything um, we could do. Something else we've talked to them about for this year um, that didn't get approved for this year, but we want to bring it back to them when we do when we recap this year is essentially moving the start line to the West Side Highway. Um, and I know that was something that has been talked about in the past. And, um, you know, the police department was definitely not against it, but I think in such um, with with other changes, um, the extra hour was was a big change just to help um, a lot of there was a lot of collisions happening along the route because of congestion um, in prior years. So that was one change they allowed us to make for this year and then want us to bring back the potential moving the start line, um, you know, to 2023. So things we've definitely looked at and we'll continue to pursue with them. It would be great only because if you manage to stay through the rest of the meeting, you will see there are so many people trying to pack into the first two weeks of May. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little frustrated, no offense intended, that you're coming literally a month, less than a month away. I think that that's not fair. And especially when you've had a very long time to plan mm -hmm. and as a community board chair, I would not know that you were moving back to May when we heard so little complaints from August, mm -hmm. so little complaints versus every other year that I've served in this community. Yeah, and that's that's great feedback for me. I'm not, I would say new to this role, but 2021, I started at Bike New York at the end of 2019. Um, so obviously 2020 was a wash and then 2021 was kind of a weird year for us. So now, um, you know, now that I'm much more aware of of this, I think we can definitely, I can definitely start joining community board meetings as early as you would like, um, you know, for next year. I think when you're talking about planning, giving notice, um, which Lucian and I talked about earlier, at least six months, sure. because it gives us an opportunity to then turn around and understand, for example, will there be a run walk in Battery Park City the same day, mm -hmm. right? What has anybody else looked to permit on any other street? It's just, it's far more. Yeah, absolutely. And Devin, we can also, you know, help try to corral support to move the start line uh, to a place that makes more sense. If, if, you know, you present and the community agrees. So we're happy to be supportive in that way as well. Great. Thank you. Yeah, that would be appreciated. In particular, I think of that beautiful um, pier in Hudson River Park that now was open for community use would be an amazing discussion to have over there, Pier 76. Yeah, we, we agree. Do you know what else we had asked you that was not addressed or can Lucian speak to that or Betty? Um, the things I had read a little bit about were um, 
making sure flyers are being distributed um, the month of and in advance, which is something um, we we will um, do this coming week. And we've been doing outreach via in person and phone and email to local businesses around Church of Franklin um, starting at the end of March. So we'll continue to do that. Um, we're also going to hang some event notification signage just in the area. So bigger signs that let people know that the event is happening, you know, on church on May 1st. Um, and we'll take those down after the event as well. And then um, I think just more flyers to local businesses, multi-use buildings, um, residential buildings in the area as well. And Devin, if you would also tweet at us and at the Better for City Authority and every other large, um, you know, government agency that has a territorial kind of uh, interest in this area and we'll be sure to quote tweet it tweet at others okay. um uh, and and repeat it and post it everywhere we can so just uh, definitely tweet at us facebook at us okay. linkedin at us anything you can and we'll we'll make sure we we turn that around as well asap yeah of course Well, let's have a Justine, then I'm sorry, let's get the committee members first. We'll have Mitch, then Eric, then Justine. Okay, before I ask my question to the uh, representative, Tammy, I had a question for you. Why was this taken out of the uh, quality of life committee that it was originally in? And you might have answered it a couple of years ago, but uh, I, I forget. Street activity permits. Permit. Right, but this was a quality of life issue. I guess it was a combination because originally the quality of life issue when I think it was before this representative was there, they, because they had speakers all up and down Church Street, regardless of the uh, irrespective of uh, the start line being Franklin, you know, they were actually, you know, they, they were Just going let back. Me answer, to, let me answer your question. Okay. Post event, we asked them to come back for feedback. It went to quality of life because it was about noise and sound. Right. And because even though with less speakers, people used megaphones, right. which defeated the purpose of the speakers on, on either side of the street. So it was about post event follow up, not their SAPO application. Okay, thank you. And okay, it's so the same kind, if, there, if, if it's if it's a bad day and we hear everything, then we will ask them again to come back and basically it's face the community because it's not. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. That that explains it. So uh, I forget the representative's name, but uh, now to to you, uh, I know that you said you, you started in 2019. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, I will say this: that the last time you had the event, there was some in, there was some improvement. So the the, the complaints uh, were before you, and even though the event started, because I was in the you know the when you first came a long time ago before you, I I was there and. Even though the starting line was Franklin, like, you know, and there was only supposed to be a certain amount of speakers, there was double the amount besides the megaphones that went back, like, almost to, uh, mm -hmm. to read or, you know, yes, I think to read or chambers, but at least to read. Uh, uh, and it wasn't true, you know, that they said that they didn't do it. So where are those speakers, assuming that it stays in the location it is? If, uh, where are the speakers going to be st the starting point of the speakers, not of the race? So the speakers only extend one block south to Leonard Street, and that's okay. I, 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 August, I, and that's um, that's okay. what we plan to do this year as well. Selfishly, that's better for the you know myself, but uh, I, I, uh, how many speakers are you going to have like starting from Leonard because there are people that live around there, even though less people live there than live a few blocks south. So it's one on either side of the street, and I can confirm that with our AV vendor. Okay. Um, there's not many there, and then there are some uh, on the mobile stage at Church of Franklin. Which right, no, I understand, but powerful. when they had said there would be one on the on each side of the street, they they put wound up putting one on each corner when it was for a few blocks down, and then one in the middle of like because they were long streets, so mm -hmm. they kind of were playing like they were they playing with the semantics. So. If, so that means you're saying that you're you're only knowing that there's going to be two speakers, one on each side of the street, not one on each corner. Right. Okay. In yes, in between Franklin and Leonard. Okay. I hope that uh, what you're saying is accurate, and thank you very much. Well, can I ask? Is, is that also going to be affected to keep with what we have asked for, eighty decibel or less per speaker? 
is obviously going to affect the number of speakers needed to get to their attendees. Yeah, that, so we will keep it yeah below 80 decibels per speaker. I mean, we're right now with the way those speakers are, we we aren't reaching anybody outside of wave one. So um, I think just as many people have become accustomed to. And I, I think yeah. what, I'm sorry, Betty. If we can get back to somebody, uh, some of the other speakers, people with hands up. Uh, yes. I think Eric was next, and then uh, Justine. Okay, a quick I question. Okay, yeah, I just want to make sure that you'll have enough comfort stations, especially at the starting line. Uh, yeah, like eight, um, like eight stations. I mean, you know, with rest, uh, Porter Johns, right? You could oh, be, yes, that's. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we can send a map. There are Porta John's dispersed. Um, there's one on church itself, but on some side streets um, where, where there's corral access points and then um, some in the VIP area that's on church between Canal and, and Franklin. So they're dispersed throughout and um, you know, some down to battery as well. Great. Thank you, then, uh, Pat, sorry, Justine and Pat Moore. Thank you. So um, I'm looking at the map right now, Devin. Thank you for this re presentation. And so I guess the waves, they start at 730 and people, I guess, start gathering at 6 a.m. And then the last wave takes off at 1025. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So on the right hand side next to the wave yeah. times, those are um, our recommended arrival times. Um, mm -hmm. So 6 a.m. is really only recommended for wave one. And that's just because they that's VIP and charity riders and they get breakfast. And that's. Um, on church between Canal and Franklin is where that is. Um, everybody else is is later than that. So the star, I just can't read the map. The star in the map is that's Canal that's, and Frank. That's Church and Franklin, yeah. Church and Franklin. Okay. So this these roads are going to be closed like all night and all day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, starting at midnight, and then NYPD does um, wave closures between twelve and three a.m. all the way down Church. Wow. Okay. And and then when does it clear out? And when does it open up to traffic again in life? So uh, our last riders will be through um, the start line at 11 a.m. the latest, and then the police look to reopen the roads um, right around noon. So you know, right after that, so they'll start from the battery and then work their way up as we take equipment off the street. Because really, all of our main equipment is right near Church and Franklin. So mm -hmm. we'll we pull that to the side of the road and pack it up, you know, as quickly as possible so they can reopen. Um, so in an ideal world, by by 12, but most of Churchy will be reopened you know, shortly after 11 a.m. And you'd mentioned when you were talking to Tammy, something about um, West Side Highway and West Street. Are you trying to move it for this year? No, we, we did try, but um, the police didn't approve for this year. So hopefully in, in 2023 is something we would look to um, do to work with them again on. Do do come back to us early because yeah. um, I'm in Battery Park City and on the Battery Park City Committee and that, that is a big disruption. Yeah. Um, absolutely. And I mean, it's a big disruption no matter where it is, but it's also <laughs> a good cause. So I, I appreciate that. So we just would have to manage because yeah, yeah, once, once, once you close off the West side highway, there's kind of just like no way out for some of these places. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, um, in some ways the police department, it's a little easier for them in terms of road closures, but I understand in a lot of ways, it's a way bigger traffic disruption. And, um, yeah, cause you're big, I mean, if it was one block or two blocks, yeah. like the tunnel to towers, it's like, okay, we can go around. But you're yeah. blocked at every exit and entrance. Anyhow, yeah. all right, not relevant now. Thank you. Hopefully one day, but we'll keep you posted. Yes, and Pat Moore, since you usually do the follow up for quality of life. Right, exactly. And people have asked some of the questions. Since this race started, we've had many complaints about noise. And since this race started, as I think um, Tammy said, the you know the community has changed. It's it's the population has an incre has increased, mm -hmm. and I think I heard you say you're going to start set up at midnight to four in the morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know people are not going to be happy, especially if you're making noise, and yeah. you know you have to tell your people it isn't just the noise from whatever they're moving. It's also them screaming to one another. You know, mm -hmm. Joe, I need a hammer or whatever, please. They've got to keep the noise at a minimum. And yeah, um, when you say the number is in real time, is there a person manning that number? If I call you at midnight, are you going to, not you, but is someone going to answer and actually take care of my complaint? Yeah, yeah, um, my associate director, um, it's a Google voice number, but it goes to his cell phone. Um, we had it set up that way last year also, um, and he'll be up, he'll probably you know, be there and then we'll be, we'll be around for sure for the, the entire set of time. Okay, because, you know, if 
if it doesn't work out, but you're going to hear lots of complaints from us. Yes, no, if you could call it right now and try, try it out. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Terrific. Thank you. No problem. Tim, is your hand up again? Goodness, no, my apologies. Oh, okay, fine. I thought to make sure that there aren't any questions out there. My, mine is just for one, one, one quick uh, a suggestion. Uh, sure, speak and. Uh, I, I will speak in very quickly. Uh, De I think, uh, Devin, one suggestion that I think I had made a while ago that the two speakers could be angled like, like facing the street as opposed to facing the buildings. So, like, like, like once, you know, the, okay, the, the, just to mitigate a little. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Well, in the absence of other questions, uh, well, we need to go on to a resolution. What I'm going to guess is that the, therefore be it resolved is one, we basically support this activity going on, but, and I went back to some of the past ones, uh, we still appreciate the work that the Bike New York has done to improve conditions, but we still ask them to put out the flyers and communications well in advance of the event, that they improve day of the event responsiveness, including the phone number, which Devin's already said they have, uh, not use bullhorns before 9 a.m., uh, the speaker sound be limited to 80 decibels or less, uh, as Pat Moore just said, that people doing setup before will make it 7 a.m. Uh, be reminded, instructed not to yell, to limit their voices, uh, and to have Bike New York representative dedicated to day of services, day of the race, to ensure that the stipulations are agreed upon and so that people can have someone that can be responsive. Any other and comments? And speakers will be angled in towards the street as opposed to the buildings, if you can hear that. Well, we don't need to tell them how to do it if we give them decibel limits. No, Betty, you know something? That, that's one of the things that have come up in, in the quality of life when we were dealing with conscious and everything else, the angle of the speakers, which also mitigated things for the residents. Uh, of course, that, that or at least, okay, that's my opinion. And, and, and it's, it's uh, the angle of the speakers make a big difference in sometimes the residents' uh, complaints. I will put that down as a whereas I'm not going to, I don't want to put my neck out there as being a professional who understands these things because well, I'm a professional who understands these things. And so I'm giving expert testimony. Okay. Can, can, can you see what, how, what other people think? I mean, I didn't think this was controversial when I just like, I just thought you forgot to say and she, what she agreed to, but I mean, I'm not going to, you know, lose sleep over it, but I, I thought it was non-controversial. Can I make a suggestion? Please. That speakers are not facing the residential buildings. That's what I said. <laughs> and, and just optimize optimize sound for event space only. That doesn't tell them which way they point, except don't point it into the apartment buildings. Okay, and that, that'll be added to the list of the items requested. Can you also, uh, my, I apologize for not having my hand up, request that they come back to a different, to discuss with Community Board 1 and NYPD a different route and a different date for 2023. Those discussions start on, you know, in time to make changes. Well, you know, actually, I and get your take on this because what I had jotted down was do we want to actually put in a therefore be it resolved that uh, New York City government consider allowing the race to take place in August because it sounds more like they're getting pushback that they want to make changes too and we yep. need to encourage the city government to allow changes I think that's a great way to to express it as long as it gets in there I'm really happy because I'd support the uh, race a heck of a lot better if it was uh, not the first weekend in May. Great, then we'll just put in a third, therefore, not third with a be it further resolved. But maybe uh, instead of just specifically saying August, say summer. Well, the advantage of August is it is so much quieter. Do you really wanna say summer or do you wanna say August? 
I want to be flexible. So yeah, I want to say summer because I don't want to be too prescriptive. What about Q3? That's July, August. Right. Sure. Yeah. Well, it's Q1 in the fiscal year, but <laughs> it's Q3 <laughs> in the calendar year. Okay. We're down Q3, although I agree August would probably be the preferable because it is the quietest. But if everybody else is just as happy with having July or June, it's okay with me. July would be my thought only because I'm always looking for dates where you don't have high school graduations, college graduations <laughs> in the neighborhood. Um, you know, the leagues you are want done. July, August versus Q3. I would think July, August, but I know I'm not on the committee, but that's what I vote for if I had a chance to vote for it. Well, you will by the end of the month, so. I, that would be my vote if I had a, if, yeah. Okay, let's just make it July, August. Then if someone has, would like to call a question, I will second it. Call the question. Second. And Lucian, if you'd like to take a vote. Indeed. All right, everyone. Tight. Okay, here we go. Um, all those opposed? All those abstaining? All those recusing themselves? Hearing none, I'm assuming everyone's in favor unanimously. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Devin. Thank you. Good luck with the race. Thank you. See you soon. Let's have. Who is here for the Wall Street? Bring Cordelia oh. looks on. I think she's already moved over. And um, Cordelia can let me know. Uh, Chris Mendoza is also on. Um, he'll be here for World Trade um, uh, 9-11 Memorial 5K. Cordelia is, um, uh, I think, managing both the Wall Street run and the 9-11 the, the, uh, 5K. Um, but Cordelia, let me know who else I should pull over who's in the attendee section. Looks like is L Rose Frazier. Yes, I was going to say for Perfect. the Got heart it. walk. So we do have two teams here for the heart walk. We have um, L Rose, and I know we also have a representative from um, from the American Heart Association, Dan Sturmer, who wanted to join as well. Um, okay. I can't Done. see. Oh, you have him. Okay, great. Okay. Um, Casey Cunningham, and... Jen J. That's all yes. I have left. And then we have Jen Younger here, um, and I believe Casey Cunningham should be here as well. Um, okay. But they are also here to speak to the 9-11 um, Memorial and Museum 5K. Okay. Sounds like I have everyone. Perfect. Thank you so much. Um, hi, my name is El Rose Frazier. I am a producer with Eventage on behalf of the American Heart Association. Um, I'm going to quickly let Dan give a brief introduction to the uh, event itself and to the cause, and then we will quickly route through the uh, route for the event uh, and any additional questions that you guys may have. I know you are on a time crunch, so we'd like to keep it as concise as possible for you, Betty, and we appreciate you having us here today. <laughs> Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Dan Sturmer. I'm the senior director of the New York City Heart Challenge for the American Heart Association. Uh, thank you for having us. Thank you for your support of our Wall Street Run and Heart Walk. Um, the event is scheduled to return this year on Thursday, May 19th for our first time back in person since 2019. Uh, we are very excited to bring this back to downtown Manhattan and unite uh, thousands uh, across Manhattan's corporate uh, and public communities. Um, I don't have to speak to the importance of the American Heart Association. I'm sure uh, everyone is very well aware we are the world's or, uh, largest and oldest uh, nonprofit dedicated to heart uh, research and stroke science. Um, we unite thousands across New York City. This is uh, a massive event uh, for some of the top organizations and companies across um, you know, all of the different uh, disciplines. We unite many from the financial industry, real estate, uh, health systems, law firms, 
Um, we have many of our top volunteers who are you know, executives in their companies looking very much forward to bringing their uh, workforces back to the streets of Manhattan. Um, you know, the event itself um, has a lot of who are survivors who have heart disease in their family, uh, but also the work in uh, combat COVID, help with social justice and health equity, uh, and many back directly. Um, so thank you again for having us. I'm happy to answer any questions related to the event and our participants, as well as the American Heart Association, but I'll pass it back to Elle uh, to give the logistical overview. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Dan. Um, so showing on the screen right now is the route map. We would like to call out that we do not start closing down uh, any spaces until 5 p.m. And at 5 p.m. on the 19th, we will then close down uh, the intersection of Murray and Greenwich so that we can start our setup. And as you'll see presented on the screen in front of you, our walker corral is located for the one block on Murray Street, and our runner corral is located for about two blocks on Greenwich Street. Uh, so from there, we anticipate to start the race at 645, and that'll be dependent on NYPD's approval. Um, and we'll be waiting for their signal as soon as they're giving us the go ahead. We will go ahead and start the race. The runners will go up to Warren Street and make a right. They will then go down to Church Street and make a right and proceed all the way down to Liberty where, they're make, where they will make a left onto Liberty. They'll then proceed down to uh, William Street. From there, they will make a right and proceed all the way down until they get to Pearl Street where they will make a left. They'll then follow Pearl Street all the way around as it turns into Water Street, into State Street and Battery Park. And then at third place, they will exit uh, onto the uh, BCPA Esplanade where they will run down the lower Esplanade track to Brookville Place. Um, and this is the route that we have had for numerous years now. So this is a very consistent uh, operation. As soon as we start a rolling closure for all of the streets, we will close down those streets in a rolling pattern. So the streets are not closed the entirety of the race. And as soon as our last walker passes those points, we will have an individual directly behind them in a sweep vehicle or bicycle that will be radioing to NYPD that those streets can immediately be reopened so that we take as little of a presence on the streets as physically possible. And we are looking to then, uh, as soon as our walkers and runners are out of our start area, we'll close down all of those operations there. Um, so we have as small of a setup window as humanly possible for us to get all of our equipment in and be able to safely uh, and efficiently get all of those runners and walkers out of our start area through the course and then back to Brickfield Place. Great, Ophidan, there's one piece of information I was not able to find, and can you give me a, an estimated number of participants you expect, or if you have a cap or any? So previously, this event has been anywhere from 10 to 12,000, but given that many uh, of the businesses that support the run are not yet back to full-time capacity in their offices, we are looking that the event will be somewhere in the range of seven to 8,000 this year. Um, and that's just given that many people will be choosing the virtual option to run from home or to fundraise in other ways that are not joining us physically on site. Thank you. Sure. Let me scan for hands up questions. I, we'll start with Tammy and then Justine. I know. Uh, so. Cool. We have a true love hate relationship with this event, as you are well aware. I'm a little dismayed. It does not sound like you have made any changes to the start line that we have asked for for. I don't know the last 4 or 5 years that the event has been running. Um, when the run has gotten up to the numbers that are uh, typical, it is overwhelming on the community. In Tribeca, we have had numerous and you have been here and heard it if you were here families, not, and families and parents who have come saying that they are lock boxed and cannot get their kids in or out of the neighborhood whether they're coming home from late after school because while you don't think that the roads close until five o'clock they actually start shutting the roads down earlier because that's an nypd call not your call it's based on your start time and what they perceive. So we have seen streets closed down as early as 3, 3.30, which has given problems for buses, for kids coming home from schools, from all kinds of schools, from after schools, from kids trying to get over to the ball fields for their leagues and things like that. So I'm a little dismayed because I was thinking with all of the amounts of time that you've had during COVID, that the concerns that the community had raised 
could potentially have been ameliorated in some manner. I'm really looking forward to hearing anything that you have to say on that and why, for example, when you're in the middle of a residential neighborhood, why couldn't you start at City Hall Park and have that be a start line and use some of the beautiful parks and out of the more residential streets? Is it because Citigroup is one of your large sponsors? I mean, I'm just trying to understand here how, and I know you, I've seen the beautiful letters of support. It's not that I think it's a, it's a bad event. It's just the logistics are extremely difficult on the neighborhood. And much as you heard us talking one speaker before you, it's about finding balance for the tourists, for the people who live here 365 days a year, and the workers who are doing this run and supporting the organization, which is amazing. But like letters of support from the sponsors, I would I would scream if they didn't give them, if I was the not-for-profit, right? I mean, hello, they're your, they're your sponsors and supporters. Right. That doesn't move the dial for me. What moves the dial for me is the respect and flexibility that you show with the community. And I am looking forward to hearing how you respond. Absolutely. And, um, you know, of course, my first comment is that I joined um, our production company in 2020. So I was not with the organization for the 2019 run. We're only working off of documents that we have from previous years. Um, and unfortunately, NYPD really are the ones that make these calls with, uh, you know, the times that they chose that they perceive is necessary to close down the streets. Um, and the city is the one who dictates the route for us. So we're unfortunately not able to go to them specifically and say, we'd like it to go through here, there, or the third. Um, Have you so, proposed any other routes to the city or did it was the same paperwork filed year after year? Has there been any meeting that we have asked you to have with the city to discuss alternative routes? Well, I'm happy to jump in then. Um, again, my name's Cordelia. I'm a senior producer. I'm working on both of this and the next event. Um, I'm also new to producing the actual event, but we did regroup with the producer that led this in years past. And I know that last year when there was, um, you know, concern over the route, this was taken to NYPD to discuss these, these issues. And we keep being told that this is the recommended route. Um, but that's not to say that, you know, us taking on this event and Ellen and I now producing it, we are absolutely going to go back so that we can really make sure that that meeting is happening um, and that the concerns are being heard of the community. Um, so we will definitely be bringing that back to NYPD. And then this is the second time we heard today someone say about the roads actually being closed earlier. We had a meeting earlier with BPCA and we were just going through our time and we said, you know, we close. Elle and I work off the permits and the spreadsheets that we see from years prior. So we said this, you know, it closes at 5 p.m. And they said, well, in the past, we've seen that it closed at 3 p.m. So this today was the first time we heard this. And now you're the second person to say this to us. So we will absolutely go back to NYPD to understand when are they actually closing those sections of the route? Because in our understanding, it's 5 p.m. We don't allow any setup to start at our start line to 5 p.m. It would be a lot easier on our production team if we were starting at 3 p.m., but we don't. So we start that at actually 5 p.m., having an hour and a half to set up that start line. Um, so I, we absolutely hear you on that, and I want to make sure that we understand when they're actually closing that road so that we can anticipate these concerns that you're speaking of. I just want to interrupt. Just st stop sharing your screen. You're on mute. There's a school in Battery Park City, PSI is 276. I can speak to the race and how it affects it. My kids could not get home from their after school activities from Manhattan Youth because they bus back to that school because of the race. On and off, that has happened through the years. And so what either has ended up happening is the kids got stuck and they couldn't get home by bus and you had to find it. You had to go find a way to get through the race to go pick them up at a community center or they cancel the after school activities. So those are the kinds of things yeah. that year after year. And I am sorry if you're new producers, but I'm also going to hold the American Heart Association responsible. They are the organizer. They know these. 
This is not new news for anyone, which is why I said I, I, it's distressing. I'm glad you met with the Battery Park City Authority, and I'm glad you're hearing the same things, but understand this is becoming Groundhog Day here. So, I, and, I, and I really, trust me, it's, I, I'm not yelling at you, but when you get to 10,000, then oh, you're, we understand. Also, you're not on the sidewalks anymore. After 5,000 or 6,000 people, you're not on the sidewalks, you're closing streets and people are running in streets. No, so that's absolutely understood. If if I did that in your neighborhood at where you live, you might be a little stressed out. So we're just looking for a little bit more partnership. Absolutely. And also to the earlier point, you know, we were on obviously for the session prior. Um, we would love moving forward an opportunity to present earlier about this. So if we can come in, I mean, this year, the problem I'm sure that any event organizer has seen COVID with the delays and all of us are just holding our breath to make sure that events are coming back in person, especially for these nonprofits that are really, really dependent on the fundraising happening again and not wanting to commit to an event that does not happen. Um, I'm hoping that with this season, this is the return to live events. And absolutely, I can assure you, we want to be in these meetings sooner so that we are able to have these discussions, you know, more than six weeks out from an event and making sure that, you know, we're able to prepare and anticipate in any way possible. I think I appreciate that. And I look forward to hearing what everybody else has to say. Working on events myself, I think the frustration is this could have been a discussion that was had at the end of 2021. This could have been a discussion that was had theoretically if we are able to host the event right that this discussion could have happened any time in the last year the fact that it didn't happen at all or at the minute that you guys were brought on even as a suspect before the permits were issued is disappointing because the organization itself as amazing of an organization as it is they know they know exactly what we're saying. This is not new. So uh, apologies, but I appreciate the thought. And if you're with them, yeah, we'd love to certainly have a conversation Absolutely. the following yeah. month. Absolutely. And we will also still obviously bring back what you're saying to NYPD so that we, like I said, fully understand what we are promising forward so when are these closures actually happening how can we anticipate anything i know that we were told that this route helps so that they still have access to the fdr and that this is still they're recommended on the best route to mitigate traffic concerns but as you're saying that you know schools are having those sort of issues and um you know we are reading up on stuff we understand that that these are real concerns and that you know we want to do our part to to mitigate that yeah, and and I, I'll just, I'll just I, add the American Association side too. Like we have, we absolutely understand and, and hear this feedback, and we would welcome the opportunity to to be a part of this discussion earlier in the year. Um, we've been holding our breaths, you know, for a long time trying to get this event back in person, and finally having it approved uh, for 2022 has been huge for us. And so uh, we are of the community. We want to be good partners in the community. Um, we have taken all protocol that we can to make it a safe uh, and, and event for all of our participants, you know, with COVID and these community discussions. So. Um, again, just want to reiterate that we want to be the good partners and we absolutely welcome uh, that feedback and want to be a part of these discussions earlier going forward. And understand we have two streets, only two that crisscross the island south of Canal, Warren and Chambers. Chambers is untravelable for anything because you close Warren. So I didn't even talk about the traffic. I talked about just the people trying to get around, you know, and things like that. But under, understand this is why anything closer to the site um, is absolutely less traffic. Even one block south is better. Thank you, Tammy. We'll definitely make a note of that. Yeah, I'm, I'm taking Perver's notes. So yeah. Well, Justine, is your hand? Yeah. And my hand still up. Thank you. Sorry. Um, so I just am looking and I found the 2018 
January 2018 resolution, whereby CB1 recommends that um, CB1 be presented with an NYPD traffic mitigation plan. I We don't have that, right? And then provisions being made for people to get home, be able to get home and get to work if they need to. I don't see that. Um, uh, and then, of course, the notation that the event takes place at rush hour on a weekday when kids are getting back and forth from school. And that's in 2018. And as Tammy said, I think that the run impacts at least three, if not four public schools at at the time of five. Yeah, five public schools that I see Tammy's hands go up. Plus there's a number of private schools and after schools and day care programs that are in, in, um, in operation that all close down and people wanna go home at five, six o'clock. So it is a real true burden on this community. Um, Remind me of the date again. This is going to be May May nineteenth. May nineteenth. Okay, is that Mother's Day? No, it's a weekday. Okay. It also shuts down the buses. And which, yes, the, and that, the school buses too, which is which is the school MTA, buses. It MTA. shuts MTA Downtown Alliance off. Yep. As well. Everything gets done, so people get stranded. So uh, that's the point of the flyers, letting people know way ahead of time. And then I'm assuming, and this might be more of a question for Nick than it is for you guys, but I'm assuming the volleyball court will be taken down for the run, or at least the net will be, because I don't see how that would, they're gonna be running right through that part of the Esplanade. So. Hey, Justine. Hey, um, I'm, I don't know if it has to be, but it may yeah, have Yeah, looking at it, it would be, it would down, go, probably go back up the next morning. I would for, you know, other events happen throughout the course of the year when we do like family dances and whatnot. Yeah, exactly. We put it, it back up, up as soon as it would be. But if it does have to come down, like once it's up for the season, if it has to come it's down up. for, you know, a night, you know, for an event, it goes back up the next morning. Thank you, Nick. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, guys, I guess that's my biggest thing is to listen to what Tammy said, because it's a huge impact. It's an impact on Battery Park City. It's a huge impact on all the schools. It's an impact on Tribeca and, um, this is a good cause, but you guys could do better and you need to do better. And it's been many years. And that was in January, 2018. So I don't know who's been here long enough. And I don't know who here has been, but those are from back then. So anyhow, thank you. Yes, and I, well, I'd like to put it in perspective that I travel around the community to, in fact, have to get to community board meetings in general in past years. I have not had any problems going across the district. Uh, sure, there are road closures, but as a pedestrian, I haven't really been hindered at all for getting around. So I'm surprised that people are finding things so dramatically affected other than driving, which I can't do. That's so funny, Betty. I've actually run in this race, so I like it and I support it that way. But um, yeah, it's packed when it's coming through. It's packed. Right, but I do want people to keep in mind that the businesses and the res the participants, the workers are also constituents of our community board and they are actively participating. So for the homeowners who are concerned about their little children, they also have to balance the desires and needs of the others to do charitable work, this one. Right, Betty, if, it, work. if the buses could all operate and people could get around, that would be one thing. That would certainly be the most beneficial change to be able to work around the bus stops so people don't get shunted out of the neighborhood because otherwise what happens is the m9 completely stops north of all of cb1 in the past the m20 the m22 and the m15 so and the downtown line. So if there was a way and not everybody can take the subway. So yeah. if there was a way to be able to preserve the MTA, then it would be certainly something I'm not worrying about cars or truck deliveries as much. I'm just really worried about public transit and getting people from point A to point B. Well, since I don't see any other hands up the last call. Then I guess we'll move forward with the resolution. And I've looked at the past years and kind of what I'm hearing from this one too. Therefore, be it resolved, I'm gonna guess, you know, in general, we support uh, the charitable events. 
The NYPD is urged to minimize the time and the number of streets that are closed to pedestrians, bicycles, and traffic. Uh, and that the city government consider alternative routes for future years that can be used, since we were just told that they're the ones who really dictate that. And two, be it further resolved uh, that the American Heart Association is urged to have flyers posted and seek local coverage in order to inform residents, workers, and businesses of the event, the date, and the times, as well as the street closures. Any other comments from people of something that was missed or? In the absence of seeing hands, I'm going to ask if you want to make a motion to vote. To end discussion and get ready to vote. Call the question. Second, a second take a vote. I'll second it. Okay, here we go. Anyone opposed? Anyone abstaining? I'm abstaining. Meltzer abstains. Anyone recusing? So we have uh, one abstention and the rest in favor. Thank you. Thank you, team. Although it sounds like most of you are staying anyway. Yes, I'll do be the 9-11 memorial. And let me check to make sure we still have quorum. I, I could stay for a little more, Betty. Okay, well, we'll try to get through this one. If you'd like to present on the 9-11, feel Great. free to just, that team to start. We have, um, we, we have eight. So if you really need to go, we're not going to lose quorum. We need six for quorum. No, I'll, I'll, I'm okay, actually. Thank okay. you. Yeah, I'm good now. Um, hi, can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, Chris. We, Chris can, hear we can hear you. Awesome. Um, name is Chris Mendoza uh, from the 9-11 Memorial um, Senior Manager of Government Community Affairs. I do want to take a moment. Actually, I want to give the floor to Casey Cunningham, who is most recently uh, has been promoted to the vice president of events, taking over for Christy Hughes, who has recently just left the uh, museum. So I just wanted to give the floor to uh, Casey and to talk a little bit about the 5K that's upcoming. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for having us this evening. I really appreciate it. It's my first community board meeting. So it's been a great learning experience to kind of sit in and eavesdrop on all of these really um, great issues that you guys are addressing. Um, so thanks for letting us do that. Um, as Chris said, I'm the new VP of events taking over for Christy Hoos, who some of you might know or worked with in the past. So um, very large shoes to fill there. Um, but we are hosting our annual 5K run walk on Sunday, April 24th. Um, we're, it's the first time we're back since 2019, so we're very excited. It's one of the institution's main fundraisers, so very important to us, especially after having had to close the memorial and the museum in 2020, and then still trying to recover those losses from the last two years. Um, so I just wanted to introduce myself, say thank you very much for all of your support of this event since it launched in 2013. Um, and I'm going to turn it over to Cordelia, who um, is kind of project managing this from our production side, and she's going to kind of run through all of the logistics for the event. Great. Thanks, Casey. Hi, everyone. Again, um, I'm Cordelia Lux. I know I was speaking prior. Uh, I'm a senior producer at Eventage. You know, we're an event production agency based in New Jersey. Um, yes, so we are so grateful and happy to be back for a live event. Um, this event is taking place on Sunday, April 24th. Um, this will actually be the 10th annual event. Uh, unfortunately, obviously it did not take place the last two years. So everyone is really grateful as Casey said, to be back in person. Um, so thank you for who pulled up this map here. Um, just as in prior years, we are starting at Brookfield Plaza. Um, the big change this year, and which is actually why I reached out because I wanted to make sure that we were communicating this um, to the community board, um, is that we made a change at the start of our route. So in the past, we exited um, Brookfield Place directly onto the Esplanade Plaza through Rockefeller Park. 
Um, this year, in order to expedite the participant flow and actually reduce waves at the start, we are starting on North End Avenue, and then we are heading onto River Terrace West until we make it to Chambers Street, where it picks up the route as it has existed in years prior. Um, our thought for this is really to reduce bottlenecking and expedite participants um, exiting from the start. In the past, we've had to have waves, um, which slows down, obviously, participants entering the route and then actually clearing the area. So this year, we'll only have two waves. We'll have a runner wave and a walker wave, um, and this will dramatically, we hope, reduce that bottlenecking because they'll be on River Terrace. Um, the big effect for this is that, and this is a request from nine from um, NYPD, um, because of you know counterterrorism threats, and this is a very special event in that way. They are not allowing vehicles to park on the west side of um, River Terrace. This is a no standing parking area. As it exists now, but as I'm sure all of you know, it's lined with cars every day. Um, <laughs> those are mostly, um, you know, vehicles with NYPD and and whatnot. So they are going to handle that mostly internally. We'll still be doing route firing to make sure that's communicated. We'll be putting up, you know, signs as we can. Um, I know BPCA said that they would communicate that as well to the community, and NYPD will really be communicating that internally to make sure that's known and again that's a request from them just to make sure that there are no vehicles on that west side of the street where the walkers will be um, but all walkers and runners will be on the sidewalk so how the route will work and again mostly this route takes place um, on parks on trails and on sidewalks so we exit Brook brookfield we'll go on river terrace um, to chambers and then we actually have a split there so we'll have runners that will go on the bike path heading north to Late Street, um, and our walkers will stay in Hudson River Park. They'll do a turnaround at Late. We'll have a water stop at Pier 25, and then they will continue along south on the um, the Battery Park Esplanade, all the way down to um, Battery City Park. Um, and actually, this this map has this is not correct. So. I am noticing here, I'm not sure exactly where this route came from. I did send a route in the packet, but this does have, I see a small change here. This has us exiting a third place where we actually stay on the Esplanade the entire time. Um, again, it's a security concern. So they want participants to stay on the, um, the trail for the entire time. So we go through the South Cove. That was what our meeting was today with BBCA, just to make sure we fully understood exactly where they should be walking. So. I'm happy to send an amended map post meeting because I'm not sure exactly where this came from here with this turnout. Um, and then they will exit onto Battery um, Park Place and we will then be on, um, we'll turn left onto Greenwich. And this is where we do have a rolling street closure. So this is the final half mile of the route. We'll have that um, rolling street closure where just like we talked about before, this is really just a bubble around participants. So we will have NYPD shutting that down the roads in front of the first runner and behind the last walker. And we actually have a dedicated staff member that will be following that last walker and they are signaled to NYPD to open back up the roads um, so that we are able to urgently open reopen streets as soon as they um, are able to. And then we will finish at Greenwich and Cortland Way um, and we'll have a finish line experience this year at Greenwich and Fulton Street. And that's everything for our route. Um, Jen, anything else you wanted to add? I think that's. Can you zoom in a little bit so we can see the street closures? Also, Jess, if it's Sorry, easier, I'm not quite sure about that. Yeah. I have it on my, I have the, the actual map up on my computer too. So if it's easy for me to share, I'm happy to do that as well. You might have an issue getting permission, I believe. Let me see.
think I'm good. Yeah, there you go. Okay. Yes. So as you see here, this is where the actual route will be. So they stay on that South Cove um, and go behind the Wagner School. And again, this is security reasons. That's why they keep us on the trail for as long as possible. And we enter onto um, Battery Place and then here to the can zoom in and you can really see those closures. So they'll go down Greenwich to Trinity and then back on to Greenwich for this entire way. And then we finish at Cortland Way and um, Greenwich. All right, great. And do send us a copy of the amended. Abs yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks. It was taken. It was taken from this. I think there was some confusion at some point um, about if it should exit on third place, and that could be why. That's just an outdated version. That's what it is, Cody. We we had heard from NYPD that Battery Park City Authority had asked us to amend the route to come out on third and go down Battery Place, and then NYPD said that this route specifically goes through the South Cove. Um, just to keep the participants protected for longer. So that's why we switched back to the route that goes through the South Cove. Perfect. Thanks, Jen. Okay. And if they're ready for questions, then we'll have uh, Pat Moore and then Justine Kucha. I'm sorry, the map just <clears throat> was oh. taken away. So you're I can on keep Greenwich. sharing. Sorry, I can keep sharing the map so you can yeah. ask any questions. I was just to trying it. to see. So you said you're, that the race will be on Greenwich Street. So yes, just for the last half mile, we actually finish adjacent to the memorial. Um, so we actually go north on Greenwich um, to Cortland Way. And in the past, we finished. Uh, Casey, you'll know it better than me because we weren't producing it then. Um, but we finished. You know, I think one or two blocks earlier. Um, but all that added to this was really being on Port Authority property. Okay, so Greenwich from where to where? From yes, from Cortland Way. That's where they'll be finishing. If you can mm -hmm. see that here, all the way down to Battery. All the way down to Battery. Yeah, I, I really don't. Yeah, I'm not on Greenwich to all the way down to the Battery. No. Yeah. Well, they go on to. Um, Oh, they Greenwich. turn up to Trinity to get to Greenwich, but yes, and then I'm only concerned about Greenwich Street. I live on Greenwich, basically on Greenwich Street, right in front. Of, I I live on Cedar in Greenwich, and as you know, in you know, in this little neck of the woods, we only have six functioning streets. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what time of day is this going to happen? I missed that. I'm sorry. So, so the race starts at eight fifteen, and as we said, we did make some changes so that we can expedite participants being really out of our start. Um, so we are expecting that all runners and walkers should be crossing the finish line by 9.45 a.m. Okay, all right. And, that, and that's generous timing. That's, right. just, that's Just remember, there are only six functioning streets in this little <laughs> part of town. And people, if they can't access Greenwich Street, they can't get into this little part of town. All right, so. All right, we'll see how it goes. You'll hear from me if it's really awful. President Justine. Thank you. Um, so let's start at the end. So that area at the end at Cortland is what you're saying is the end. Yes. So that's that space that's kind of, yeah, it's behind the memorial. I'm not, you know, behind the the memorial. I can't say it nicely. So I'm the not World Trade Center it. campus. Yes, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. So, and that's the streets that are like, they're not really open, right? They're exactly. Really they're, they're actually closed. Yeah. Um, so and our finish line will be a fire truck. Um, okay. And what'll be there? Like, and how long will people be gathering and, and hanging out? Or will they be? Yeah, so in the in the past, there was really this incredible community day that was really elaborate and had a lot happening. As Casey said, obviously, the last two years have been really hard in the memorial, um, and we're all just trying to get back to live events. So it will be a much smaller program, and it will be what we're calling a finish line experience, and it will be on um, Greenwich and Fulton Street. Um, it will only take up one block outside of Westfield on Port Authority property. Um, that we will have a finish line experience from 8 a.m. till 11.30 a.m. So, again, much shorter than it's been in years past. Um, we'll have some food vendors out there. Um, we'll have some programming um, at our stage later on with um, the West Point Band. 
Um, it's open to the public, but it will be a very condensed finish line experience. Can you scroll up to where that's yeah. going to be? Because Fulton's Absolutely. up a little bit higher. Yeah, it will be right here. So it will start at this intersection and then it will end here. And it will all be on this street. Oh, so they're going to go from the end and they're going to, you're going to, so, and these roads will be closed then. You're going to pull them yep. onto the street, to, to Fulton Street. Yes. Yeah. And that's, the, there's residential there too, though. I believe, Pat, you'll know better than I do, but I think there, there are people that live all along Fulton Street too. So yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, yeah, that's what I'm concerned about. Especially yeah. now that you say there's a And that's, a, that's one of the big thoroughfares, Fulton Street, which sounds ridiculous because it's such a narrow road, but considering for that area, that's a huge thoroughfare for us. Um, all right, and have you done, and you haven't done that before down Fulton? Because I was we thinking have. we have you we have, have. yeah down Fulton like that in the in the past it actually took up several blocks so it was Fulton Street and Casey correct me if I'm wrong but I think I've seen enough side plans of it and went all the way down Greenwich as well right. um, and uh -huh. it was a much more elaborate setup you know we had four stages a lot more programming um, this will be much smaller. And then again, the whole nut stuff with the decibels, you heard about the decibels and the noise and the microphones and all that. We did. Yes. Okay. So and those we have a, things. honestly, due to budgetary reasons, we have a very pared down sound system regardless at this, um, but we'll still keep that in mind and make sure that it meets that. All right. Now let's go over to the, let's go over to Battery Park City, which is where it starts. For a minute, please. Sorry, but I'm loving this map because this is big and I can kind of see it. <laughs> no, I know. So this is, you know, we don't really promote the actual route to participants because again this is always a security concern so um we keep everything on this, <laughs> this yeah no that's all right this is yeah. so this starts in in uh so it starts at brookfield place um we are allowing participants in the to north in. neighborhood so you're doing this actually you're doing it by oh that is okay so that's the south that's the, the north side of the marina and exactly congregating north around belvedere marina. plaza Absolutely. So we are starting, and that's where our participants will start from. They'll, they'll go right onto North End Avenue. Um, we are allowing participants to start checking in at 7 a.m. Um, and this is for them to show up, get a bib if they didn't already check in. We're offering two days of advanced pickup, um, participant pickup for, um, so hopefully most people will be prepared, but knowing that, you know, yeah. everyone is human, will show they'll show up and they'll be able sure. to check in, get their bib, get their t-shirt, um, maybe a light refreshment, which we haven't actually confirmed yet, um, okay. and then they'll start. So, as you know, off on North End Avenue here, I'm sure as Betty will tell you, these are all residential. You know, so you've got Brookfield Place, which is behind, that's commercial, but then you go up farther and you've got residential buildings you're going to be going through. So at 7 a.m., people are going to be sleeping. And at 7 a.m., our participants, they are not even able to enter the site on this side they are only able to enter the site um by pump house park um We're, and again okay. <laughs> they'll yeah. start at they'll start at 8 15 a.m with our runners um and that's part of our hope for this year is that by altering that route at the beginning we so, should okay clear of this area so for sooner. cordelia I, 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 it's always something go back to pump house park so everything to the south of pump house park right those, this is all residential, this right? All, yes. This yeah. whole thing. So, so where they're coming in, you've got Gateway Plaza, which, which is maybe the largest residential. It is the largest residential building in the neighborhood. And, um, yeah, lots of people, lots of sound. So I guess what I would ask is that you guys focus really long and hard on telling people, keep your voices down. If, think about it. If people, this is our backyard. So it's, it's funny. This is the Esplanade. Yes. The Battery Park City of Esplanade, but it's our backyard. And it's it's truly where backyards where people uh, are sleeping right above you. So that's that. And then I just don't understand the the, walk, the how it is going to go up on the top part. So now yeah, absolutely. I can walk you through that. And yeah, yeah. absolutely, we understand that with you know it just as tiny. No so megaphones. No avenue. Yeah. So they come out here, and again, this is all on sidewalks. Mm -hmm. So everyone here will have to stay on the sidewalk. That's our requirement. Um, they will continue along River Terrace, mm -hmm. and this is both our runners and walkers. We used to have them split, um, right. and then they will go uh, make a right on Chambers, again, only on sidewalks, and then here, entering Hudson River Park, 
that's where we will split. So we will have runners that will go on the bike path. We work with DOT on that. Um, they'll only be on the bike pack bike path until late street. Um, and our walkers will stay the entire time on Hudson river park. And you'll have police that keep bikes off the bike path. Yeah. So we'll actually have, as you see, any of these stars here, yeah. um, we are going to have, um, course marshals that will be here to make sure, you know, that everything is safe. We are going to have, um, this intersection. We're making sure they turn south of the actual intersection so that we can have additional personnel that are north of that intersection to make sure that just for this section, anyone on the bike path goes to the other side of the street. And we'll have there signage no as well. Well, there is no other side of the street to ride a bike on. It's the sidewalk or the highway. Right. So um, I think you might want to have people give people the information that they're going to have to go in a few blocks to find a bike path to go south for those blocks, because otherwise you're telling them to ride in the middle of the highway. There's no option there, right? Yeah. You're not allowed to ride on the sidewalk, which is why there's a bikeway. Right. On the uh, east side of the street. And you're going to have people who are going to be angry and pissed off if they don't know about, I mean, and you're not going to get everybody because people who of are course. coming down, you're going to get, but they're going to need to be told where to go. Of course. And maybe, and, and maybe it's Greenwich street that they're going to be told to go to or Washington street. I don't even know. I can't see it big enough. Pat's but like not Greenwich. We want yeah, to yeah. But you don't have many choices. As Pat said, yeah. there's not many choices. Yeah. So yeah, it, it's going to be something that maybe you want to be broadcasting. I don't know how Twitter, maybe talk to transportation alternatives to tell people get off the, you know, from this time to this time, don't be on the bike way or something, because there's really no safe place to go. Because if you can't do the greenway, you go to the Esplanade, but you can't go to the Esplanade. So then you got the street and literally it's the highway. And we can, we can do that and we can reach out to transportation alternatives. And the other thing to know is that the reason why we're keeping it to just the walkers is, I mean, just the runners is that they'll be clear of there pretty quickly. Which is so fine. That's it's, great. It's about, it's about a half an hour disruption where we would have it closed beyond that it's going to reopen and just the esplanade will be used just, and letting people be aware they can plan their days yep. but yeah that makes sense that makes okay. total sense and then yes all right thank you so much of course um and then just to continue through the route do you um they'll go yeah, that's back fine. i kind of get it and then and yeah then, then there's the just route. a turnaround I'll let someone else ask a question i'm sorry thank you no of course If no one, I have another question. Where are you advertising? And how are you letting people know the route and to stay off of the streets and where to go? And oh, we don't publish the route, so the route's not published. Um, you're talking about advertising the actual event. No, then the bicyclists show up, and you know there are a lot of people who ride their bike early in the morning. Yeah, we can we can have that through transportation alternatives just to let them know that that section of the bike path from late to chambers will be closed for a half an hour on Sunday morning. But that's um, the only place that people will mm -hmm. be able to get that information. Suppose they don't look at transportation yeah. alternatives. Yeah, ab absolutely. We, we I mean, if you guys have suggestions as to where you would like us to to do that, DOT had just asked us to come up with a plan for redirecting them. Um, but if you guys have suggestions, we're definitely open to taking those suggestions. I mean, I don't, I just know that there are lots of people who ride their bike early in the morning. So, yeah, I don't have a suggestion, but I would be really clear about where you would tell them to go for those blocks and how to get them safely across the West side highway at a light to a safe street. That's a bike lane going south and north. They got to get the options and then back in again. Be in mm -hmm. touch with Lucian. He can give you local media. Who can report on just some best practices and support for the run? But that's possible, but if they don't want to uh, publicize the route, it makes it difficult. But we can, uh, we can, we can say that that portion of the route is uh, going to be closed to cyclists. Yeah, no, I would do that, and I'd also consider having to post a sign at the closure point with the alternative information. So if a, so, bike cyclist comes right up to a place where it's closed, they have an idea of where to go instead and where it reopens. Okay. Yeah, and and if you you know kind of create a a, a compact, um, you know, uh, uh, disclaimer about that that uh, detour, I can send it out to a couple of bike organizations um, that will also um, propagate the message. Yeah, it's gonna be good for Hudson River Park to know as well. Yes, and and Hudson River Park is. 
they've been looped in on this as well. So they do know with the closure and whatnot where it will happen. And we appreciate um, was that Lucian, if, if you offered that to regroup with you on that. Sure thing. And uh, one of the things is I, I have my hand up, um, maybe I just wanted to jump in and to say that um, for next year, you all are going to encounter some issues with having a route along the park side of Battery Park City. So you may want to um, circle back with us even earlier than six months because a good portion of that waterfront may be under redevelopment for resiliency. So um, that's something to keep in mind um, for one or two seasons. Um, you may have to have a radically different routing um, and security apparatus to keep people safe. Yeah, we appreciate that. We actually heard that today. Uh, we did a walkthrough with Nydia and her team um, for that area again to make sure we are really on every single thing is the right path. And she did mention that there'll be extensive um, construction in the South Cove. Well, keep in mind around Wagner Park as well and down to there. But in fact, Battery Park City Authority posts a lot of their resiliency plan for Wagner Park online on their website. So you can get a lot of details there that it's going to be very closed. And we'll make sure to work closely with them to make sure that, you know, we're prepared for following seasons. Great. And Tammy? Actually, it was it, the, everybody has said exactly what I was going to say, but I was going to also give you a heads up that the extension of the construction, and this will apply for both the American Heart Association run as well as this, will be across the front of Wagner all the way across the front of Battery. Battery Park itself will be under construction, and it's not within the park, it's on the northern edge. So that will have a major impact on both those runs looking ahead for the next two years. Yes, because they're closing the Esplanade from South Cove all the way around to Battery Park. Okay. Better to know now when we're looking for for route changes and discussions. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Thank you all. Yes, thank you. And so I guess we have to move on to resolution. And yay, it looks like the last one. Now, it sounds like there is a general consensus of agreement that it is a worthwhile charity and endeavor. It is a repeat for them. Uh, so it's to express support. What else would people like detailed? No megaphones on a Sunday morning before seven. Do you want to do a lot of the same comments that were made for the other, like the bike New York? I think that's a smart use. Not above 80 decibels and no mega, yeah. And Greenwich Street, their route is all residential. So, so making more, sure that yes. even, I know that uh, for this year, there it, you're crossing at Edgar Street, and that is still a construction site. People aren't living there yet, but next year, that won't be a construction site. That'll be a school, even though it's a Sunday and yeah, residents above Sunday. it. So it really will be about making sure that you work with having really good directional signs and people who are directing runners for safety. Well, I'm curious why next year they can't route over to West Street and run up West Street to the memorial. I don't know why they have to go up Greenwich Street, which is residential. Uh, West Street is less residential. True, but you have to cross the tunnel exit. Not if they're down at the Bull and they go over, if they're at the Bull, they can go over through the park, through the garage. I, I don't know. They can figure something out where they can be on West Street instead of on Greenwich Street. We can talk about it next year. I was going to say, because I think next year, unfortunately, because of resiliency, the changes are going to have to be pretty dramatic to the route anyway. I, I don't know that it's worth mentioning in resolution, because I think it's going to have to happen. It, there's no choice. 
So the resolution as it stands would be support, but then the listing that also came up with the others with the considerations for sound levels and yep. directing the noise and call the question, please. So yes, call the question. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Up to you, Lucian. Okay, right, here we go. All right, I'm listening for any uh, voices in opposition. Any abstentions? Any recusals? Okay, with that, I'm assuming that everyone here is voting in favor. Thank you so much. Thank you, and thank you for presenting. Thank you, everybody, and thank you, Betty. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Betty. Thanks, thank everybody. Happiness. Yes, but right, everybody else, Betty? a couple more slides that I just want to mention. Okay. You have a couple more. I apologize. I do need to run. I have an 830 meeting. Yeah, no, that's it's fine. I just wanted to tell others that this is going to be very quick. Uh, next slide. There all is the, a capital the, rule change. The people here um, presenting, um, you're free to go. Yes, sorry. Uh, the Taxi and Limousine Commission's proposing amendments to the rules to create a taxi flat fare, $39 for trips between LaGuardia and Manhattan. Uh, and also for a flat fare for Kennedy Airport would go up to Manhattan would be $65. So you can look forward to this rule change because they generally happen. Okay. Uh, Betty, the $65 is higher than what it is now, uh, uh, correct? I heard that's what I hear. Yes, it is. Uh, and the hearing date is April 5th. For those who are interested, you can see the link where you can put in your right. testimony. Right. Just, just to let you know, like, I don't think I'm going to be able to, to be available for that. But the, the they, they, that's kind of like what with what the toll would be. But coming to Lower Manhattan, you don't have to take the toll from the JFK because you just go over the Brooklyn to the Manhattan Bridge. So it's only 50 something dollars. So I just want to let everybody know that it's a big difference. Right, and that's why I'm notifying people. Uh, Thank you. Because there is a decrease for LaGuardia. There's an increase to Kennedy. You can put in testimony, and this is how to do it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the hearing date is April 5th, so you can enter online any time prior to that. Right, and then they wonder why people are taking more, like, uh, you know, cost services because, you know. Anyway, thank you, Betty, for everything. Sure, yeah, that's uh, next one. Let's see what other CBD tolling program, what's come out. State Senator Leroy Comrie, who oversees the MTA committee, is warning the MTA not to allow any exemptions beyond the three in the law, or else losing revenue. Uh, the MTA, so you know that's what's coming for, out of state government. The MTA expects federal approval by the end of this year. Uh, it, however, it would not go into effect during the first nine months of 2023 for those who are looking for a time frame, what's kind of out there now. And again, you can see the various links for these announcements. Can I ask a question? I may not have an answer, but I'll try. <laughs> so what are the three? The three that are provided for in the law now do not include a carve out for residents, do they? No, the three in the law are for people in that make under 60,000 a year and live in the tolling area for people who are in transportation for people with disabilities and there is one other one. It's like a formal accessory, not that you have a disability, but you have to formally have that, right? It is not defined, but that appears to be where they're going. I, I would guess given the statement by Senator Comrie, that's where he's going with it. But like I said, the law does not strictly define it. All right, I'm picking up my walking shoes. Find <laughs> new shoes. Thank you. Yeah. Betty, can I ask you just one thing about the under 60,000? That's going to be in a tax break, not like where you're exempt from paying, correct? That is what the law says, correct. Yeah, that, that's, yeah, that's the God. The people making that little need will live week to week. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. okay. Thank you, Betty. That's yeah, garbage. It's garbage. Yeah. It's garbage, is right. You're right. <laughs> uh, Mimi? It's, yeah. So the law said that they needed to make, what was it like five billion dollars before twenty twenty five? Is that right? It was about a, a little over a billion a year, correct? Yeah, yeah, okay, a, a little over a billion a year. Well, but so if if it's not going into effect during, 
I know they're already in a big hole. Three. Yeah, like are they gonna bill us in order to make up for all of the years that they haven't? None of those things are known. And in fact, I can tell you that on Thursday, yes, uh, the borough president's office is holding a meeting of all the transportation chairs and the community mm -hmm. boards to talk about this. And maybe I'll know more after that. That would okay, be really thanks. cool because yeah. it sounds really like important. it sounds like, yeah, they're going to bill us because at the end of the day, all they care about is generating their revenue. Yeah. It's, not a, it's not about the pollution. It's not about anything else. About It's about generating the revenue. Be well, Betty, the law, says, the, the law says that we need to make X amount of billions of dollars a year. So what happens if they don't make it? I mean, like, <laughs> it's not, you know, uh, it, it's, it's like one of those going out of business signs on Chambers of 42nd Street. Everything must go uh, or else, you know? It's, 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 Let's it's, let Lucian speak and maybe hear some insights. Thank you. Hey, so you know, my understanding is that, um, you know, the first year you know, they're going to try to hit the, you know, the, the 1 billion mark as best they can, given the modeling that's been done. Yeah. And, you know, you've all heard about um, one model that was put together by Charles Komanoff. Um, but if they make too much money or not enough money, they will tweak the the program to you know to respond to uh, the way that the market has responded yes. to the original pricing. Um, my you know what well, my understanding is, Betty, and uh, you may have a different um, perspective on this, is that. The billion dollars is going to be going towards. I, I feel like they're going to bond this out. Yeah, um, they are. Right. So I mean, it's a billion dollars a year, but they'll just bond it out for far more money than that. So they have a it massive is. capital um, uh, pool, and then they can, you know, a, a very dedicated set of revenues to pay off those bonds, so they can do a massive capital expansion. Um, that's been my, that's always been my assumption, um, yeah. for a regime like this. It was, it was like a $50 billion capital plan. Yeah. It's like so when, when, when you're bonding, it doesn't behoove you to make more than what the payment is for the authority. They don't, I don't think they're, they're, they're looking to exceed the amount that their, their, their goal is. Because for the bonding, they only need to meet that payment for 30 years or 25 years. Lucian, have you ever heard of a business or a government agency that would complain and stop the profit at the number that they hit when they, they could see that they can make more? I mean, just, just look at the airlines and everything they're doing with, you know, you know with, with over the years. I mean, you're, you're speaking, you're a great guy and you're speaking idealistically. I would be shocked if that was the case in practicality once they see that they can hit a little higher figure. Well, I think you have to go back to the law. Does the law say that they need to set a number and stick with it? Or they can kind of freewheel? Accounting accounting is a funny thing. I don't think there's ever been a movie or a concert that where the producer ever said we made money. Accounting is a is a is a uh, uh, like the is a wonderful a wonderful uh, magician's trick. Anyway, but that I'll be quiet now. Thank you. <laughs> yes, and then uh, next, because these are just announcements. These aren't editorial. I'm, I'm sorry, Betty. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> next slide. I think there was one more. A uh, path to clean electrified buses for those who are interested in it. Actually, this was a very interesting. The uh, RPA did a one-hour presentation. The it is. A recording that you can see. It is way more complex than I ever would have guessed to try to implement electric buses. Uh, and this was a very, very well done, very comprehensive look at all of the challenges and you'll get a much better understanding of what they have to do to rebuild kind of everything in order to electrify. It's not just buying buses. But in fact, they're working with manufacturers to how to create things, how to create the batteries, how to change their bus stations, how to redo the roads, how to rechange their routes. It's a fascinating talk. And so those who are interested, <laughs> one to go to. And I think that's all the news 
from this month, I'll keep looking. So if there were no other comments or questions, anything people would like to say? Hi, Debbie. We did it. No, thank you. That's what I have to say. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. Well, then, Lucian, if you want to turn off the recording and we'll I have to say. go home. Next year, I hope they take all these races up to Central Park. <laughs>